make the tackle. They're starting inside linebacker. And it wasn't as good a spot as I thought, but good enough for a first down at the 50. These Lions backs aren't very big, but we've mentioned it a couple times this season. They are very tough runners. Able to fall forward very often. Lindenwood 5-2 and two on the season. And the pass out to the flats looking for Kobe Smith through his hands. I think he was starting to look upfield before he was able to grab it second and 10. So often that looks like such an easy throw to make. But you're trying to lead the receiver upfield. But there's a very fine line in throwing it behind the receiver or too far in front. I think that's actually sort of a miss by Brister that he'd like to have back. Second and 10. From the 50, going down the sideline, he was trying to make things up with Kobe Smith, but overthrew him this time. And that's another miss by Brister. A little bit off to start this game here in his penultimate home start of his career because he had Smith with some green grass. That would have been a big gain to put them into field goal range. Andrew Martin, the junior, is with him in the backfield. Cade Brister, the six-foot senior out of Fort Zumwalt North, in suburban St. Louis, St. Charles, where we are today. Brister drops to throw again, steps up in the pocket. It collapses. He's in trouble. And they didn't blow the whistle. He's able to shuffle it ahead to Martin. Didn't get a first down, but created positive yardage out of nothing. I thought they had him wrapped up for Me the too. sack. I think everybody was just waiting for the whistle to blow. Tavares Albury, the linebacker, makes the tackle, or actually held him up. Would have been a tackle. Yeah, I'm surprised they let that go. And Martin was able to get five, so it'll be fourth down. They're going to go for it. Or maybe not. Brister now looks over to the sideline. Yeah. Big early decision in this game. And I think this is a statement that they expect their defense to play well today in case they don't get this. Fourth and five from the William Jewell 45. Stepping back to throw, Brister to the sideline. Oh, the catch is made, and a good one by Peyton Rose on the near sideline for the first down. It's already the second time we've seen them throw that corner route. They get in between the safety and the corner on this play, and Cade Brister was off the mark on the first attempt. He drops it right in the bucket this time over the top of Hickman's head, and in enough time to get it before Roberson could get there to break it up. Slot left, give to Andrew Martin. Tries to cut it outside as the hole closed up. Turns the corner across the 20 to the 15. Andrew Martin's getting five yards a carry this year and has done a marvelous job. Hooks makes the tackle. And, and, and I think what the, the most impressive thing about Martin's performance this year, this is a great cut, beautiful. Nothing inside, bounces it to the outside and then the burst to get upfield to gain nine. But he was not supposed to be the starting back this season, but he has filled in marvelously. And the Lions really rushing attack has lost nothing. Second and one from the 15. Brister wants to throw, has time, looks in the end zone, has a man, touchdown! Peyton Rose with six. This is a little too easy for Peyton Rose. And for Kate Brister, they've been doing it for years. And if you're going to give Peyton Rose inside leverage, this is just a post route. One on one against the corner. And he gives up leverage to the inside, which you cannot do in that situation. He had no help. And once Rose was inside of the cornerback, Quessy Hooks, it was a pretty easy pitch and catch from Brister to Rose. Logan Seibert for the point after. Snap back. The kick is up. It is good. Fifth touchdown of the season for Peyton Rose. That's his 40th catch of the year. Leading the team in receiving. This duo has been fantastic for quite a long time and they get on track early. Seven nothing. Lindenwood goes on top. Lindenwood five and two coming in. William Jewell one and seven and fallen on hard times in recent, recent years trying to turn things around. You know, back in the in the early 80s, they were one of the best football teams at their level, ranked top 10 a couple of years in a row. They recruited the St. Louis area heavily, um, and you fall on hard times, and you got a battle to try and turn things around, and that's where Jewel is right now. And that's what they're trying to get turned around with this still relatively new staff under, under the head coach McGlinchey in his third season, but... They did at least snap a losing streak of 27 games this season, but they 
have been really unable to establish any momentum, and they're still looking for a GLVC this win, GLVC win this year as well. Cyber to kick it off. Grant Latina and Marcus Whitmore are back to receive the kick. It's high, should be returned. They're going to take it though, at the where are they going to mark it? The five yard line. As Grant Latina elected not to return that one. Yeah, so the Odd with choice. the with the with the fair catch, I was a little surprised he didn't decide to return it either. Now they can put it out to the 25. They'll get their choice of which hash they want to mark it on. But it didn't look as though there was any reason for him not to try to take it out and get more than the 25. So a little bit surprised, but some conservative play here from the Jewel Cardinals trying to make sure they get everything on track and not have any big mistakes early. Taylor Eggers is the starting quarterback. He's a sophomore. First play from scrimmage is complete to the 29-yard line. He found uh, Del Rian Amos, a 5'10 junior on the catch. Jaden Patrick on the coverage and the tackle. This is the matchup that the Lions are going to have to watch today because he's their leading receiver by a wide margin. They are looking for him when they drop back. Second and five. Inside handoff. The give all a big hole opens up. And Jordan Clay, first down yardage plus across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Jordan Clay, the 5'8 sophomore. We've talked a lot about the size of the offensive linemen in this OVC conference that Lindenwood's had to go up against. They're going up against, uh, obviously, a Division II school today, so they're more on par with the size. I think they're hoping to do a better job against the run, but not great that time. First and 10 out for Whitmore up the sideline. A nice big gain again for the Cardinals. So it's been a nice start offensively for them there getting into their offense and giving their quarterback Eggers some easy reads and throws and allowing the playmakers to do the rest. Second and 10 from the Lindenwood 49 yard line. Jordan Clay in the backfield next to Eggers. The give to Clay. Oh, a nice hole opens up. He gets the first down across the Lindenwood 45. Stacked up to about the 42. We'll see where the mark is. It's like it was Whitmore that finally got to him. But this has been a, a good start for the Cardinals running the football. You know, you mentioned, Zach, a little bit smaller in size. It's also a young offensive line. Three freshmen and two sophomores. So the future is bright there. For William Jewell. And, and I think that Lindenwood, because of that, has expect, expects to play well against the run today. Going to be a keeper for Eggers. Might have been a broken play. Turns the corner, though. Makes something out of it. He gets first down yardage all the way to the 31-yard line of the Lions. And obviously, as we're seeing, that has not been the case. Hats off to the Cardinals. This offensive line has gotten off to a good start. A lot of big holes to run through, as you've mentioned. And a smart decision there by Eggers to keep it on the edge. Nice move. First and 10 from the 31. Eggers from the shotgun by himself. Out to the flats. Catch made by Amos. He's hit and dropped for a loss. So Amos, we talked about it a little bit ago, is their leading receiver by far. 37 receptions. Next closest on the team is at 19. He's also leading the team in receiving yards with 470. He's got five receiving touchdowns. Next nearest is two. So the Lions that time were able to key on him and bring him down. Devin Edwards with a really nice play from his linebacker spot. Amos goes wide, light, uh, wide left this time. He's the target, but it's underthrown. So as you pointed out, Del Rian, Amos, the junior, is the man. To, uh, that's his favorite target. Couldn't get him there. And, and the Cardinals game plan is to get him the ball and not force their quarterback to do anything crazy to do so. These are easy passes, but this time he misses it. Just throws it at the feet of him. That's a little flat route, and that's one that Eggers is expected to hit. Third and 11 now. Clay in the backfield with Eggers. Looks to the sideline, steps forward. Now he's ready. Taylor Egger steps back, eyes on his man, and he threw in between two receivers and out of bounds. That'll make it fourth down, and the kicking unit will come out. That's a miscommunication there. Eggers thought his receiver, I believe it was Amos, on the far sideline there again. 
He thought he was going to shorten it up and turn around on a little comeback or a hitch route. And instead, Amos went deep. No shot to complete that long field goal here. Paul Jelen is the kicker. Snap back. Ball down. Kick is up. It's long enough. No, it's not quite. It is long enough. It went through. <laughs> it scraped the back of the crossbar. And it's good for the field goal. It barely had enough to get over the crossbar. As you mentioned, it actually hit the padding that protects the upright. What a kick. 49 yards, I believe, was the distance there. And it gets William Jewell on the board. How about this replay? Look at it come down. It hits the pad. Maybe he only had a yard to spare. But it's three points all the same. So that's great momentum for William Jewell. You get some points back on your first offensive drive and establish some momentum. Take a break. Back with more at Lindenwood University where the Lions lead William Jewell 6-3 to three on ESPN+. Plus. Back at Hunter Stadium on the campus of Lindenwood University. Paul Jelen, who just kicked that long field goal, be kicking off here. Spencer Red and Andrew Martin back. Perhaps a discrepancy on the score. We had said the Lindenwood extra point kick was good as an official did raise his arms, but after deliberation, they ruled that it was not good, and that's why we're 6-3 to three here. Kick is high and deep, and out of the end zone or into the back of the end zone, Spencer Red lets it drop and the Lions will take over could end up actually becoming a factor in this game if William Jewell's able to keep it close the Lions have had a great red zone defense so far this season they forced their opponents to kick a lot of field goals now with the missed extra points on their own touchdown on their opening drive field goal would tie the game obviously very early first and ten from the 25 Kate Brister with Andrew Martin in the backfield. The give to Drew Martin, got a nice hole and across the 30, gain of about five. Good run and a good hole opened up by the offensive line. Yeah, I love the physical running of Andrew Martin on this play. He's gonna take Adam Callahan, the linebacker, and get a couple extra yards after contact. Callahan was engaged with it looked like Lankrate, but still good hard running by Andrew Martin. Second and five, the give. To Martin again, cuts it back inside. Now wants to slip outside. He does beat one tackle, throws the stiff arm, and is finally brought down across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Terrific run by Drew Martin. Great run by Martin, and I want you to take a look at the block on the on the left edge by the receiver Kobe Smith, known more for catching touchdowns. But look at the block he lays on wow. the corner. Maybe a little bit in the back there, but they get away with it. That's what. Springs Andrew Martin free on the left sideline. Trips right from the 46. Quick throw to the right side for Kobe Smith. Turns it upfield along the sideline. Tiptoes there and has finally run out at the William Jewell 45. Mitchell pushed him out. And I wouldn't be surprised if Smith got an opportunity on that screen because the offensive coordinator, Dusty Avorka, saw the block he laid on the play previous. Rewarded. So oftentimes, yeah, you do see the there's a correlation there. A really nice job by Smith, though, to get upfield and shake a tackle himself. We're going to let Kobe wet his beak a little bit. Keep him involved. Man in motion. Dropping to throw, Brister, he wants a big throw. He takes a big throw, and a big catch all the way down to the five. Peyton Rose again. Oh, what a throw and catch. They are picking on Quessy Hooks, the corner. Peyton Rose runs another deep post route, more of a skinny post. He's going to try to hit his head on the goal post if he makes it to the end zone. Cade Brewster got off to a slow start, but that throw is right oh. on the money. You can't put it out there any better than that. And a great job of Rose to hang on through the contact. First and goal from the five, going for the inside corner. Touchdown! The catch made by Peyton Rose. Boy, he threw right over the defender. Again, they're picking on hooks. They have found a matchup they like. That's twice now they've been able to score, exposing that one-on-one -on -one matchup of Peyton Rose and hooks. This is an old school fade. They've been running this as long as football's been being played into Really nice job of Rose to 
hang on with defenders draped all over him. Seibert back on, snap down, kick is up, through the middle of the uprights, and good. So that'll put Lindenwood on top. Series history is brought to you by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile, your smile power with Delta Dental. 18th meeting between these two teams. Lindenwood leads 10 to seven. The Lions have won six in a row against Jewel. And last year they beat them 53 to 10. In that game, Cole Duggar, 303 yards and five touchdowns. Peyton Rose, three touchdowns all in the first half. We'll take a break, 13 to three, Lindenwood on top. This is the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Plus. As we're back down here on the field with more Lindenwood's Lions football, but before the action resumes, I have the pleasure to be joined by Lindenwood Lions men's head basketball coach, Kyle, Kyle Gerdeman. Coach, thanks for joining, greatly appreciate it. Obviously, exciting times coming, first game at the D1 level against Dayton on October 7th. How excited are you for the start of this new journey? Uh, we're real excited about it. Guys have been working really hard. We're anxious to get going and start playing games. It's a tough challenge at Dayton, but a great place to play, and we're, we're just really looking forward to the experience. Another exciting event coming up, Lions Late Night, the third season that they are doing this next Tuesday. What can you tell the, the students here at Lindenwood about what's going to be going on, why they should come out and attend? Yeah, it's going to be a great event. Our, our, our operations people do a great job putting the event on. It's exciting for our team, our women's team, but it's also a great opportunity for our students to come out and be excited. We'll have some contests. We're doing a skills challenge, a three-point contest. Then there's a lot of contests and games set up for the, uh, for the students to come out and enjoy the night with our student athletes as well. So it's going to be a great chance for everybody to get a good look, not only at our men's team, but our women's team as well. It's going to be a fun night. Well, I can tell you what, I'm convinced you guys should go out, attend Lions late night, be ready because basketball season is beginning soon. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to a great season for Lions basketball, and thank you, Coach. First and 10 from the 25. Handoff inside, a big hole opens up, and quite a run by Clay. Still on his feet to the 50 and finally brought down in Lindenwood territory. Did he fumble? He did. Lindenwood believes they got it. Let's see. Yes, the Lions recover after an unbelievable run by Clay. He just forgot to tuck it away. This is a beautiful run, and now the officials are talking about it to see was whether or not maybe his knee was down. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get a review here. It's Lloyd Lockett that comes out of the pile with it. It'll be interesting to see on the replay who finally ripped the ball out. This is a beautiful run. The Lions are out of their gaps on the outside zone run. And after breaking a couple of tackles, he just forgets to put two hands on the football. Darian Bolden. The man. There he is again. Two interceptions last week. He's the reigning OVC Defensive Player of the Week. And he strips Clay to give the Lions the football back here. I think little question that that is a turnover and the first one in the game what, what was the one key we talked about for William Jewell they can't turn the ball over it's going to be tough to overcome the 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 sort of gap that they have with Lindenwood if they're turning the ball over especially when they're able to make big gains in the running game which they've been able to do so far handoff inside I believe that's Rhodes or uh, Williams in the game I'm sorry, that's Donovan Marshall. Endicott on the tackle, gain of about three. We've really seen the secondary for Lindenwood come alive over the last couple of weeks. Guys like Lloyd Lockett, Darian Bolden, senior leaders in this defensive secondary have really played a big role in their success. Man in motion. Fakes the handoff, looking across the middle. No, he wants more. Brister throws deep toward the end zone. Oh, almost caught, and yes, it is a flag, multiple flags, as Peyton Rose was there, and he, he almost caught it even with one hand literally tight behind his back. Yes, and uh, this is just a lesson in you've always got to be looking back for the football, and Cameron Walker, who was in coverage of Rose this time, has never got his head turned around. So pass interference. As Peyton Rose is the favorite target so far today. Yeah, I, th I think the officials got a little confused there. Yeah. And it was, conf it was confusing me too because the White Hat initially said that the penalty was declined and that would make absolutely zero sense, of course, since Rose didn't catch the football. First and 10 at the 39 of Jewel. 
Brister out of the shotgun. Inside handoff again for Donovan Marshall. Tries to turn the corner, gained a couple. Tough running there. Marshall, the six foot senior out of Lutheran North High School in St. Louis. Endicott again on the tackle. And Marshall is a little bit of a different back. Rhodes and, and, and Martin are both sort of the, your smaller sort of scat back types. Marshall, as you just mentioned, Bob stands six foot tall and adds a little bit of a different element to the rushing attack. Now Cade rolls left. Brister throws for the sideline, overthrown. Smith was never going to get a chance on that, and he was triple covered anyway. Yeah, you can tell that the William Jewell Cardinals made an adjustment after the first drive on that, and they're playing that corner concept a lot different. This is, I believe, a smash concept, another very old traditional passing concept where you're going to get the outside receiver run a hitch, you run a corner in behind that, and really well played defensively as the Cardinals had plenty of guys there. Third and six, timeout William Jewell. So obviously a big play for them. And again, on the offensive side, they've got to feel pretty good despite the fumble of what they're doing on offense. They've got to figure out a way to stop Cade Brister. Granted, uh, the all-time leader in basically every quarterback passing category at Lindenwood. We'll talk about what they'll try and do when we come back from a break. 13-3 to Lindenwood on top of William Jewell. Here in St. Charles, Missouri, this is the Ohio Valley Conference football on ESPN+. Plus. Another marvelous crowd at Lindenwood University, and their fans have really embraced what Jed Stugart is doing with this program as they go to Division I, leading now 13-3, third and six from the 35 of William Jewell, Kate Brister out of the shotgun. He drops, heavy rush. The blitz was a good one, and he stacked up. They're going to give him a little bit past the line of scrimmage. That was a, a fantastic job by the by the Cardinals to bring pressure. That sack earlier in the game that Brister actually ended up being able to find Martin and pass out of, the Cardinals were able to get pressure with five that time as well. You see the five rushers, they'll do a little stunt in there, and then a spy comes late to wrap him up, and there's just nowhere for Brister to go with the football. That was a big play in this game for things to not get away from the Cardinals early, and they're actually going to force, I think, the Lions to punt the football now. Fourth and nine, they're going to punt it away. We wondered, and I know Riley Ripper wondered if he was going to get a chance to get in here and punt today. As the Lions pretty confident, but Ripper will get a shot. This will be one we'll be trying for a tough to uh, present a tough return as the flag goes. Oh, so we're going to give him a little more room to punt here. Yeah, and and that's you know that's fine. They they I don't think had really I think they wanted to think a couple seconds about what they exactly wanted to do. I think the Lions in a perfect world were going to try and go for it there or kick the field goal if they were within the range of cyber but with the sack then you're not in a scenario where you could pick up that first down you're also then out of field goal range so they had to adjust on the fly ripper averages right at 40 yards per punt fair catch called for and made at the nine yard line and that's where william jewell will take over first and 10 only trailing by 10. yeah no that's a that's a big for the confidence i mean you don't give up any points off the turnover that turnover really felt like it swung the momentum in Lindenwood's direction because they had scored touchdowns on each of their opening drives. What made it look pretty easy doing so as well. And then to get the football back, it felt like they could have built up a pretty big lead early. So that was an important stop for the Cardinals. Now let's see if they can do anything with it offensively backed up. Their running game has been very good here in the early going in the first quarter. Jordan Clay has ripped off a couple of nice runs. He averages four yards per carry. Eggers is going to keep it this time, turns the corner across the 10 to the 12 to the 13 and run out of bounds, a short gain. Little QB power there. Use the halfback like a fullback and let him lead up in there. Eggers has a lot of size to him, and we've already seen him demonstrate his ability to run the football. Senior safety Lloyd Lockett was able to run him out of bounds. In the backfield, Jordan Clay with Eggers. Eggers the sophomore, 
only thrown a 40% completion clip, and he gives it to Clay. He's stacked up. They were waiting for him, thrown for a loss, back to the 7. I think they're going to mark it right at the 10 and actually give him his forward progress. We'll see. Big Tavian Weary, he is a stalwart on the defensive line for the Lions. He gets in there and makes the stop. And this is, I think, more of what the Lions defensive coaching staff is hoping to see. Kobe McClendon in there as well. But really nice job to sort of push the offensive line backwards and a big play here for the Cardinals. Third and nine. Oh, trickery has they rolled out. Maybe another fumble. Rose, or rather Clay, was trying to go inside. They did get the fumble, scoop it up, and score. What a play by the Lions defense. Touchdown. It's a big man touchdown. Tavian Weary, I believe, scooped it up and scored. He'll remember this day for a long time. How about that? A little tackle for loss. And then he's going to find the ball in his hands. Yeah, it popped out. And he was able to grab it and score Tavian Weary tough from, to, from St. John Vianney High School here in St. Louis. Yeah, and tough to see who knocked it out there. I think it maybe was Sterling Williams, number 35 in there, but David Whitmore was there as well. Well, you don't, it's hard to blame Jordan Clay because that play would never really had a chance. He was trying to not back him up too much, but sometimes you can get greedy and try and do too much out of desperation, and that got him. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. That play was sort of doomed from the start. They were trying to use a little misdirection with a rollout and then a draw play back to the far side of the field, and it wasn't there because the lineman had gotten pushed into the point of attack, and so once it was off kilter, I think that threw everything off, and you're exactly right. I think that's sort of what caused the fumble. So the officials put this play under review, I don't know if it's on the fumble or the score, but Tavian Weary, a proud Vianney Griffin, men of character and accomplishment at Vianney, and Tavian certainly is, the senior certainly is one of those, and I'm happy for him, assuming he gets to keep those six points on his resume. That was popped out in midair. I believe it was And Sterling I can't tell Williams. how it got to him. Yeah, you see him there, picks it up on the right side of the screen, and I think the only question, because the ball's definitely out, right? Weary picks it up, his knee is definitely not on the ground, so I think the only thing they could be looking at here is whether or not he broke the plane, and looks like they're going to come back with a decision here. Here we go. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Touchdown, it stands. Congratulations, Mr. Weary, good for you. Hard work pays off. Makes it 19 to three. Hard to overstate the impact that the seniors on this Lions defense are having on this team the last couple of weeks. Darian Bolden and now Tavian Weary joining the party. It's completely added in even another element to this already successful team. Seibert on the point after, missed one at the beginning of the game. That one splits the uprights. And the Lions continue to stretch it out. Some good moments from William Jewell, but a couple of mistakes, giving it right back to Lindenwood. Yeah, we've talked about, you know, you just you just can't have those types of turnovers if you want to compete against uh, a Division I opponent. And unfortunately for the Cardinals, who have had some bright spots, as you mentioned, they've been running the ball really pretty effectively. They've just been unable to put it away and have had some costly mistakes, and now they're gonna have to overcome that. This upcoming drive, I think, is gonna be huge for both the psyche and the momentum of this football game to not let things get out of hand. If you can get some points back on this drive, I think you feel a little bit better about making this a game. So the sun peaks out. It's mostly cloudy this afternoon in St. Louis. A light wind at max five miles per hour out of the east, which is odd for St. Charles, Missouri, for the wind to come out of the east, but it is today, and so that it's going across the field. Unlike the ripping wind last week that was going south to north, this one is will have no impact. Line drive kickoff, but plenty of carry 
over the head. It does not go into the end zone. Scooped up. They look to cut it back for the return. And stacked up at the 15-yard line. Big hit made there by Trey Ranson. Whitmer was kind of maybe confused on the decision on how to play that one, scooped it up finally, and Whitmer brought down at the 15-yard line. There's been sort of a new school of thought with these kickoffs. It used to be, you know, if you have the leg, boot it out of the end zone, touchbacks are good. Now we're seeing a lot of kicks by design fall dead at about the 10 with more hang time to try to pin offenses back even deeper, and it worked that time to perfection. Eggers gives it ahead to his man, Jordan Clay. He gets out close to the 20-yard line. No, they're going to mark it back at the 17. He did not get much forward progress, so it'll be it'll be second and seven. <laughs> Sophomore quarterback Taylor Eggers. He's going to keep it this time. Gets a good block from his running back. Up the right sideline across the 30 and out of bounds. Jordan Clay came back and freed him up with a nice block, didn't he? Yeah, that's that same quarterback power play they ran on, on the drive previous where they're just going to take a guard, pull him around. They'll use the running back like a fullback. And you mentioned it. Nice block made by Clay. I think it's very smart move for the Cardinals to use Egger's size uh, as an advantage. He stands six foot four. Tough to bring down, and you can see he's got some athleticism and some wiggle to him as well. And listed at 244. Throws it across the middle, has a man. It's complete and brought down. I believe that was Amos. Check the number. No, it was not. Looks like it was Winston Quinn that came down with that one. Six foot four junior. That was a really tight window that Eggers had to throw it into, and man, Magruder punished him for coming over the middle. A big hit, but a nice job to be able to hold on. First and 10 from their own 49. Eggers wants to keep. He's dropped at the line and falls forward across the 50 into Lindenwood territory. That time, the Lions were a, a little bit better positioned to make the play. They ran a similar play to the power they've run a couple times, but this time they used the tight end to come across. There's no back in the backfield, and so the Lions defense is reading that a little differently and I think they were a little bit more prepared for it that time. Second to long eight. Now Eggers wants to throw to the sideline but falls harmlessly to the feet, at the feet of Winston Quinn. Even in the flat, if you're gonna throw it that far, you're going to have to set your feet and be in a better position to throw than he was there. The Lions decided to bring some pressure. Moses Hale got in there. Yeah, and I think that's what got him on his back foot to skip that one in there. Now two backs in the backfield with Taylor Eggers. He's going to keep. Oh, nice play. As a hole opens up, he got a good lead block and gets across the Lindenwood 45 to the 44. That was a nice design play. Yeah, and I think that did exactly what they wanted it to do. That now puts them in a fourth and manageable situation to where they can go for it. Fourth and a long two. Inside handoff for Clay. He got close, but I don't think he got it. He did not. Did not get a favorable spot, and Lindenwood will take over. Sterling Williams stopped him up. And a William Jewell Cardinal is down on the field. Take another look. There's nothing there. The Lions do a great job of gapping this out. This is a zone play, that outside zone that they hit for a big gain on the first clay fumble. This time, there's just nowhere for him to go. Eggers actually probably, in all honesty, should have kept this and tried to run it on the edge to the opposite way. Huge stop for the Lions defense, and now they give this offense that's hurt them frequently in this first quarter. Fantastic starting field position at the 43 yard line. Try to get a number for the injured lineman. That's can get scary. Might be uh, Bontrager, Andrew Bontrager, the 6'2 uh, freshman. 
so often you the, the reason you see these linemen with the with the knee braces is to try to keep everything stable when they're pushing on 300 pound defensive linemen and having backs roll up behind them it is not fun Andrew Bontrager was the man down and get some help can't put any weight on his left leg now he's trying a little bit so hopefully he'll be all right but the fourth down conversion failed and Lindenwood will take over terrific field position on their own 48 yard line Twenty to three, our score. Brister drops to throw. Heavy pressure. Steps up. Throws on the run. Has a man. Looks for Kobe. He's got him. Kobe Smith with the catch down the sideline, and he went out of bounds. Oh, terrific catch and run by the senior Kobe Smith. What a what a throw on the run too. We've seen them hit a couple of big plays out of rhythm. Brister's going to step around the rush, up into the pocket, and throw a dart on the run to Smith, who again gets around the corner, Hickman. First and goal from the eight. Inside handoff. Trying to drive forward, Marshall got a few yards. Did he get across the five? Nice gain, though. In heavy traffic on the run for Donovan Marshall. Mitchell, the safety, had to step up and make the play. It's been nice to see Marshall get a little bit more involved as that'll be the quarter. He's fought some different things this season. Probably the most we've seen him play to this point in yep. the year. That's the end of the first quarter of play. Lindenwood on top of William Jewell. 20-3 to three as we get ready for the second quarter. This is Ohio Valley Conference football on ESPN Plus. The Lindenwood Lions knocking at the door once again as we begin the second quarter. Second and goal from the five. Donovan Marshall in the backfield with Brister. He's going to keep. Sets up. Throws. Touchdown. Made it look easy. Peyton Rose gets another one. Third touchdown of the day for Peyton Rose, and we're only in the second quarter. Yeah, he is giving them a ton of trouble. Quessy Hooks is going to be seeing Peyton Rose in his nightmares, I'm afraid. This is a nice job of Cade Brister going through his progression. The first read is Kobe Smith on the in and out. That was not as open as he would have liked it to be, so he hits Rose coming across the middle for the touchdown. The Lions are up big early. And now Seibert. A little bit of a fumbled snap or just didn't take much and they blocked it. Great job by William Jewell. I don't know if you saw it like I did. It's just the tiniest bit of a fumble to throw the timing off and William Jewell was able to capitalize. Well, it helps if you, if you, if you block it up a little bit better too. Sure. Uh, running right through the middle there was number 27, Carson Anderson, the linebacker, and he runs into yeah. the kicker. I don't think I've seen a kicker get hit like that on a blocked kick before, but they were up in the middle. That was a really nice job by the Cardinals. We'll take a quick break. 26-3, Lindenwood on top of Jewel. It's the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Coaches profile are presented by Legends Bank. Legendary service, extraordinary people, Legends Bank. We've got Jed Stugart on the home sideline in his sixth season. But first, we'll get to Mike McGlinchey. This has spent four seasons as the co-defensive coordinator at the Colorado School of Mines. And his defense led all of Division II in rush defense in 2019. He also played offensive line and tight end at Towson University. He is in his third season as the head coach of the William Jewell Cardinals. Grant Latina. On the return, oh, slip past a tackler. A nice return, gets out to the 35. And by the way, want to mention Peyton Rose with three touchdown catches today sets the new all-time Lindenwood University uh, career touchdown receptions. That's 33 in the career for him. Yeah, just fantastic. He has been he has been just great this year for the Lions and. 
There's nobody prouder of him than Jed Stugart, who is in his sixth season as the head coach for Lindenwood. He's been a head coach for 16 seasons, amassing a record of 117 and 45. He was the head coach at Sioux Falls and Mid American Nazarene before this. Led the Lions to GLVC championships in 2019 and 2021. Of course, this is an old GLVC rivalry of sorts, getting to play the Cardinals as an out of conference rival here today. Jordan Clay stacked up, short gain, maybe one. And let's go to the sidelines, and Ethan Hannaford is there. What do you have for us, Ethan? Lee at the LU up, or make some noise, guys. If you notice, it's been getting a little bit louder down here on the field. It's because of the LU up, or I'm joined by our student leader, Spencer Dillon. Dylan, how cool has it been being a part of the rebranding of the LU uproar? Uproar has been absolutely amazing. When they asked me to be a part of this, I said, absolutely. I'm so happy to be here to be a part of this, to create a new brand for Out Lindenwood University as a D1 school. We're so excited to bring the energy and to get fans excited for our new program here. Spencer, now on your end, how, what's it like to be a student leader on, on this? Obviously, you got to be pretty yeah. ex electric, exciting. Exactly. How has that been for you in that end? For me, it has been unbelievable, an amazing experience. But at the end of the day, it's just us right here. But we credit it all to everyone behind us, too. These guys are amazing right here. The LU uproar is making a lot of noise. Back to you guys in the booth. Be careful out there in that group, Ethan. Well done, <laughs> folks. They are having a great time out there, and they should with their team with a great record, five and two, first year in division one. They lead this one 26-3 as Eggers trying to get it going. He's gonna quick roll to the right, a little sprint right, and gets it out to the left side for Isaac Forbus, the tight end, short gain, close to a first down, and there he gets the spot. It will be first down yardage. Yeah, what a catch by Forbus. He brought that in with one hand on third down. That's, that's huge, and now we're starting to see this is a little concerning. The injuries are starting to pile up. The right guard, Bontrager, was out for the first play back in this drive mm -hmm. and then was injured while Ethan was giving his sideline report. Now it looks Nathan like they've Dostel. got the left guard down. Nathan Dostel is down. He's a 6'1 sophomore. It's tough in the trenches today. So they've got Brandon Holman now in there at one of the guard spots. And I believe it's Ricky Childers in at the other one. Childers normally lines up as a backup center. Yeah. But they're getting into two deep depth, sometimes three deep on their depth chart. They send out Whitmore wide to the left side. The lone back. With Eggers is Jordan Clay. The give to Clay, nice hole, spins, stays on his feet, gets to the 50-yard line, gain of six. Been really impressed with the tough running of Clay here in this game. He has given the Lions a lot of trouble. No matter how this game turns out, the first half fumbles have really changed the game around because both times it stifled terrific opportunities one deep to get out of trouble and the other one when William Jules really rolling now second and four from the 50 Eggers drops throws has a man deep and they're gonna get a flag it was accidental but Wesley Hines got tangled up with the intended receiver and they get caught on pass interference. Yeah, and I think this is a good call. Wesley Hines yeah. going to hook Marquise Whitmire here and slow him down a little bit, and that's going to draw the flag every time. Pass, 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 pass. Defense, number five. Five first down. First down. Whitmore, I believe, was the intended receiver, and when they got tangled up, he just couldn't get free. So it will be first and 10 from the Lindenwood 39. And again, opportunities for William Jewell. We'll see if they can capitalize. Take a look at this replay one more time. I just think it's that feet. contact there. You might, be a little, you might be right, Bob. I, I think that feet, was pretty incidental. Feet got tangled up. And another running gain of five. 
Maybe a little gamesmanship on the part of <laughs> Whitmire there as well. They'll give him four yards on the carry. That's what Jordan Clay averaged coming into the game, but then averages climbing as the sophomore running back is doing a nice job. Second and six from the 35. Low snap. Give again to Clay. Cuts it outside. Turns the corner. Stays on his feet. Big gain across the 20, the 15, the 10, 5. Did he get in? They're going to say no. He stepped out at the five-yard line. They may want to look at that one again. Terrific run by Jordan Clay. Whitmore dropped him. This or pushed a, him out of bounds if indeed he did go. It's a great run by Clay, and I'm with you. I thought maybe he got in, but the official right there was all over it, said he stepped nope. out, and now William Jewell wants to hurry. Eggers the back. They'll give it to him again. Clay turns inside. Nice hole opened up. With the second line, the linebackers close things up on it quickly. I believe they're going to give him a gain of one, maybe even less than one. Petty was able to stop him. Lindenwood's been doing a much better job. So we'll get a look here at if Clay stepped out. And, oh, perfectly placed is our side judge there. Just doing his job, but looks like he may have. Snap straight back as they tried to go a little bit of a wildcat action there for Collier Surly. Chris Collier Surly. Lindenwood did a nice job not getting fooled too badly on that one. It'll move it up to about the three. We saw them have some problems against Murray State with something similar, but this time they're able to do a nice job of stringing that out, staying disciplined, and there was nothing really there for the back. Third and three, Collier Surly in the backfield. They send Thomas in motion. Now he'll come back right to left. Egger wants him almost picked off. Oh, baby, Darian almost got him another one. That almost was an instant replay of last weekend. This is going to be a read. The reason they put him in motion is to help out the quarterback to see if the defense is in zone coverage or man coverage. Bolden runs with the receiver and runs back with him, so they know that this is going to be a one-on-one -on -one oh. opportunity to pick on the corner, but Bolden does a great job of jumping this route. Fantastic instincts to know that the receiver in motion was going to continue to the flat. Fourth and goal, and William Jewell wants to talk about it. They know they this has got to be to this point, and maybe it'll be one of the biggest points in the game. They're desperate to stay in this track meet with Lindenwood, and they need six. Yeah, absolutely they do. They cannot afford to settle for another field goal, and they can't afford to be turned away on downs like they were on their last possession. So this is a key down. We'll take a quick break. Lindenwood on top 26-3. to three. It's the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Jordan Clay back in there at running back. Fourth and goal from the three. Jewel desperate to get it. Six points on the scoreboard. Man in motion. He's going to keep it and throw and touchdown. Oh, terrific play as they go into the end zone for the touchdown. And William Jewel and their timeout paid off. Well, you just had to have it. And this is some nice play design. And Eggers puts it on the money. They're going to use motion to their advantage again and use some rub routes at the top to get him free into the flat. And it's just very tough for Darian Bolden to try to run that far to keep up with the receiver. Good Grant speed, Latina. Yeah, good speed and a good route by Grant Latina. He's normally a kick returner, but he got some action and six there. And the kick is up and it is good. And it paid off for William Jewell. They knew they needed it and they got it. Huge for the Cardinals to get back into this game. Just had to have it. We'll take a quick break. 26-10, our score in St. Charles, Missouri. It's the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Ten thirty-nine left in the second quarter. 26-10, Lindenwood on top. Spencer Red and Drew Martin go back to receive the kickoff. There you see we were telling you earlier, the senior from Cumberland, Wisconsin, Peyton Rose. Quite an accomplishment. 33 receiving touchdowns, most in program history. 
and most of them coming from the right arm of number four, Cade Brister. What a duo they've been, and what a career for Peyton Rose. He has been shaking DBs left and right. Line drive kick, and it goes out of bounds. 26 to 10, our score. Lindenwood wants to keep jamming this down the field and put this one away. And it'll be interesting to see if the defense sort of feeds off of some of the momentum that the offense has garnered them with that touchdown drive. You're only down 16 points for as bad as it's felt as times with the two fumbles and some mistakes here for the Cardinals. They are right here in this game. If they can create a big play, turn over themselves on defense, or at the very least get the ball back to their offense with the score staying what it is now, you have to feel pretty good. And a ton of time to still use your running game. You don't have to panic. This could be a uh, one that'll make you panic though as they throw it down the field. That'll be pass interference. Or Willis caught anyway. He caught it. Wow, what a catch by Peyton Rose just as we talked about him. All the way down to the 14. What a catch with a man draped all over him. That's as good as we'll see. Well, now they're trying different guys on him. They put Cameron Walker on him this time and Peyton Rose is still able to find the football. That would Listen. absolutely have been pass interference. It would have had to have been. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between that and the one they didn't call earlier, but it doesn't <laughs> matter anyways. Now a nice run to cut it outside. Still on his feet, driving forward. Jared Rhodes to the one. And they'll mark it just inside the two-yard line. Sean Mitchell on the tackle, a desperation tackle. Tough running by Rhodes, and we wondered, we just spent a little bit of time talking about it. Can the defense feed off of what the offense was able to give them in the score? And Lindenwood dimming those hopes early, just two plays into this drive, and they're knocking on the doorstep. Two missed tackles and almost a third, dragging him down. Now it's first and goal, and we've got a flag. Is that going to be a procedure? You know, Cade Brister says, okay, just gives me a little more room to operate in that end zone. I think it was the interior of that offensive line that got a little antsy. Rhodes, the freshman, comes in for Martin. Rhodes, a local kid, Ledoux High School in St. Louis. Brister gives it to him. Caught in the backfield, but they couldn't bring him down. He gets to the five and thrown back. Mitchell again, the safety stepped into the hole. Yeah, nice job coming downhill. He's at the line of scrimmage. They're going to leave him unblocked by design, and he does a nice job to crash down on it. You're sort of hoping to beat that defender with speed to the hole, but he does a really nice job of crashing down and making sure that there was nothing really there for Rhodes. Second and goal from the five. Rosen Smith to the left side. Rhodes in there. Brister wants to throw. The far flag deflected and was it picked? I, I believe it was. Yes, it's intercepted in the end zone. And from mistakes early, suddenly William Jewell is making some opportunistic plays. Yeah, th this throw is not there. They're going to run the same play. They're going to have have Smith run the same route he did earlier. It's a little in and out, and they've got a flat defender there. Brister sees that and still tries to throw it up for his receiver to go and try and make a play over the linebacker anyways, and that probably wasn't the right decision. A mistake on Brister's part. I think he saw the coverage. I think it was a little bit of stubbornness trying to, he thought his guy could make a play and you, you respect the confidence, but th that's that's a big mistake and it takes points off the board for the Lions. A huge play defensively that's by right. Jewel when they needed it the most. Kyan Betancourt, the junior, that's a terrific catch. And now, William Jewel wants to get on the attack and they want to throw deep and they have a man and it's complete to Whitmore. One man to beat in a foot race. He's still on his feet to the 10 and brought down inside the 10 yard line. Marcus Whitmore with a terrific catch and run. We have seen a couple of really explosive pass plays from both teams. First it was Cade Brister to Peyton Rose and now Eggers to Whitmire. 
This is a fantastic pitch and catch, and it's everything that Hines can do to just chase him down to tackle him and at least force this offense to get into the end zone the hard way. From the eight, we have whistles. It was first and goal from the eight, and Lindenwood wants to talk about it here, try and get things back under control. They get the timeout. Well, a touchdown here really changes the complexion of this one if they can push it in. It absolutely does. It makes it, well, not quite a one-score game. You'd have to go for, for two, and it's which, early. I, which I don't think they'll do. But We'll take a break and talk about it when we come back. 8.01 left in the second quarter. Lindenwood on top, but knocking at the door. William Jewell to the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Plus. First and goal from the eight, William Jewell knocking at the door again. Taylor Eggers, the quarterback. Jordan Clay with him, takes the handoff and jumping into the backfield and making a terrific tackle. Trying to take a look, jumping into the play was Frank Robinson. Caldwell. Oh, was it Caldwell? Yeah, Caldwell was one of them. They had a couple of guys back there Frank's the first one to him, but he wasn't getting very far anyways. That was really nicely defended by the Lions' front four. Loss of two, second and goal from the 10. Rolling right, Eggers into the end zone, overthrow. He tried to lead the intended receiver, Caleb Forrest, but too far. Yeah, great coverage by the Lions back end. Lloyd Lockett and Wesley Hines in man coverage on that far side of the field. And there was not much separation. Eggers did a nice job of throwing it in rhythm on the outcut, but still well defended. Third and goal from the 10. Another pivotal play for William Jewell. Little trick play. Whitmore wants to turn the corner. He's going to throw to the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Jesse Thomas. He got the foot down and they score. It looked like a broken play as it was supposed to. Yeah, that worked to perfection. They kind of had me fooled too. I thought it was a reverse all the way. Yeah. And when he stopped to pass, he does a really nice job of selling the run on the reverse. It looks like he's trying Absolutely. to get to the edge. And at the last second, he pulls it back and fires to a wide open man in the back of the end zone. Boy, that is just huge. What a call and what execution by the Cardinals. And the senior Jesse Thomas got that foot down beautifully. Did a great job at the back of the end zone. Making it a game. Jalen for the point after. It's good. And here come the Cardinals. All of a sudden, it's a nine-point game. You see the role that turnovers can play in a football game. And it doesn't take William Jewell long to go 80 yards down the field and score. Right back in this thing. And they have to be feeling pretty good on the, the away sideline right now. And you take a look at the emotion for them. They know that Lindenwood has advanced and they're, they're struggling trying to rebuild a very young team. It's a great opportunity for them against a longtime rival to sort of make a statement. And, and, and on, there's nothing to lose, right? right. This, is, this is an opportunity, as you said, to make a statement, to get a program win, to sort of put a stamp on what you want your program to be moving forward. So I think this is a fantastic opportunity for Mike McGlinchey and the rest of his staff to instill some confidence in the program to try to turn some things around. A lot of times when you get into losing ways like this, the problem is psychological as much as it is physical. The, they've got to teach a belief system that they can go out there and win and get the job done so you can get buy-in from these guys. And a win today would certainly do that for the Cardinals. Paul Jelen to kick it off. High end over end. Martin wants to come up and block for his man, Spencer Red, and he does. Frees him up, still on his feet across the 45, across the 50, into William Jewell territory, and Spencer Red with a terrific return. 
This is so well blocked by the Lions return team. They bring Andrew Martin up through the hole and it almost looks like a run play the way the Lions return team blocked it. That was fantastically done. It's not as though Red had to make a bunch of cuts or make a bunch of people miss. Look at this. He's got an alleyway, and when I was playing in college football on special teams, our special teams coach always said, get to the highway. That's the <laughs> space between the numbers and the sideline, and that's always where you wanted to return the football, and they just did that exactly how it's designed to get Red to that highway to get him out towards midfield. I think it was the Audubon. There was no speed limit on that. <laughs> yeah, there was not. Back to the line of scrimmage was Jared Rhodes. Cade Brister has two receivers right, two receivers left. Rhodes remains in the backfield. He's going to step back to throw. Gets it complete across the middle. Nice catch made there. That was like a better job by Brister of sort of taking what the defense gave him. They tried that smash concept again, and William Jewell's been doing a much better job of taking away the corner. So a good job by Brister, though, to just settle and throw the hitch. Chase Landcreet, the tight end with the catch, gained five. Now a nice play across the middle as they were looking for Rhodes and got him out of the backfield. He gets the first down plus to the 35. Jewell has sort of been adjusting defensively and playing the Lions a little bit better. I think it was Fuentes that made the tackle there, but forcing Brister to throw the ball underneath and not give them these big passing lanes to try to take some chances defensively. I like that strategy a little bit better than trying to match up man-to-man -man and create these one-on-ones with Peyton Rose and Kobe Smith. So these two teams want to talk about it right here with 542 left in the second quarter. Lindenwood Lions on top, 26 to 17. So first and 10, Jules got to try and figure, as you point out, they've made adjustments as they've gone along, and now that's what they're going to try and do again. I think the, the strategy there w w with a high-powered offense is to force them to nickel and dime you down the field, which I think Lindenwood has proven they're capable of doing that as well. But the more plays you force the opposition to run, even an offense as high-powered and as talented as Lindenwood's is, the more chances and opportunity there is for your defense to create a big play or for Lindenwood to make a mistake. And I think that's sort of the philosophy on the defensive side of the football for the Cardinals right now. Can we just slow them down? Can we muddy the waters a little bit and, and force them to beat us with little, little five-yard outs and hitches and underneath passes? Lindenwood averaging 40 points a game in their wins. They're on that pace but got slowed down a little bit with that interception. Brister out of the shotgun. First and 10, short of the 35. A quick out there for Rose. Across the 30 and run out of bounds at the 26. Be just short of the first down. Anderson, Carson Anderson on the tackle. Really nice block on the edge, too, from his fellow wide receiver, Caleb Erwiller. He's going to take the corner out of this play and create a nice little running lane for Peyton Rose. Wide receivers blocking is, is one of the more underrated parts of the game. And the give ahead to Rhodes. He gets across the 25 for the first down, gains one extra yard to the 24. Anderson again, the linebacker on the tackle. And Lindenwood has sort of corresponded and adjusted on their own to this adjustment made on the back end by the Cardinals defense. Now they've sort of changed. We haven't seen them try to take as many shots down the field as they try to control the ball. And now we've seen them mix a little bit more running attack in. Man in motion for the Lions. Instead to give ahead to Rhodes. Stacked up at the 20 and brought down. Gain of five. Jared Rhodes. Anderson again. Carson Anderson. We're calling his name virtually every play. He's been all over the field for William Jewell. I think if you're Lindenwood, you're sort of content here in, in this little four-minute drill here to continue running the football as long as you can get four or five yards of carry. Try to wear down this defense. Second and five from the 20.
Rhodes again. He got stacked up short of the first down, gain of a couple. Well, so now they'll presumably have to put it in the air. Always could run it here, but probably going to give their best offensive player in Brister a chance to move the sticks here. But sort of running that play clock down, making sure that you're set and you have the pre-snap look that you want. Keep an eye, eye on uh, Landcrete, the tight end, out wide to the right side. He's looking, looking, back of the end zone, has a man overthrown. I believe that was Kobe Smith down there. He was going for him in the back flag, but threw it too far. And Lindenwood will be content for three points. Smith did have some space. Pretty good coverage by the corner Hickman, but I was a little bit surprised. Jewel sold out. They took a risk, put a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. There wasn't a single safety on the back end to help in coverage, and they put a lot of stress on their DBs again. This time, it pays off. Seibert for the field goal. Snap back. It's long enough. It's high enough, but it is wide right. Wide right. And Lindenwood's doing just enough to keep William Jewell in this football game. Seibert has had an uncharacteristically off day. He was 10 of 11 on field goals coming into the game today. Hadn't missed an extra point yet this season was 24 of 25 with all of his attempts encompassed, he's doubled that here, unfortunately, today. And that's a huge momentum shifter for the Cardinals. They get a stop. It's as good as a punt. You get the football back. Same score. Eggers, he's going to keep it. Gets a block from Clay. Cuts it back inside and is brought down across the 25 to the 27. Gain of seven. The Sterling line. Williams on the tackle. The Lions are, I think, giving up the edge a little too easily on this quarterback power. Eggers has been able to get out there every time they've run it. Got to do a better job of maybe trying to force him back to the inside towards their help. Quick pass out to the flats. Complete first down. Nicely done. I believe that was Caleb Forrest on the catch and run. And it's a first down. I think this is where William Jewell's offense is most in sync, when they're running the football well and giving their quarterback easy reads and throws. Little inside handoff, gain of a couple, into the line. That carry by Chris Collier Surly, he's already contributed in this game a couple of times. Cardinals can still run their offense here, but they are going to need to pick up the pace a little bit. They don't have any timeouts left. Second and eight, Clay in the backfield. And this is taking too long. Now they line up in the pistol. Hands off to Clay. Big hole opens up, and then he got hit hard and stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Boy, he got drilled. I believe that was Devin Edwards. They're going to give him couple of yards they'll mark it at the 37 yard line yeah, yeah it was it was Edwards and and Whitmore in there as well we've talked a lot about the growth of David Whitmore this season and how he's really come on it's been fun up here in the broadcast booth to sort of watch him develop from sort of his first game starting against Kaiser all the way back in the beginning of September to where he's come now he's really developed into a, a good run stopper for this Lions defense taking over for Drew Sears, who was an All-American last season for the Lions at the Division II level. Big shoes to fill, and he's done a nice job, and he's just gotten better and better as the season has gone on. And David's still a youngster, just a sophomore out of Indianapolis and Bishop Choddard High School. It is a young linebacking core for Lindenwood. Sophomores, a freshman, one junior, so that's a, a group that can grow together here at Lindenwood. Collier Surly back in there with his quarterback, Taylor Eggers. He's going to block. Eggers throws to the side. It is complete tough catch made by A.J. Austin. Well, that was a 
tough catch. He'll be just short of first down yardage. Third and a short, fourth and a short one coming. Boy, I'm a little surprised. Yeah, no, I think that's the right call. You see it here on the replay. The body's across the line, but the football never crossed the line to gain. Credit the official, they were all over. I thought that was a first down easily. But we got a great view, great shot by our camera crew to demonstrate down the line that he's about a half a yard short. And so I think if you're William Jewell, you got to go for this, right, Bob? So, I mean, I get the 146, risk. 146, yeah. You're still on your own side of the 50. I understand the risk if you don't get it, but pretty high percentage. you got to gain about a foot and a half, two feet here. You pick up that first down, then you've only got to really realistically gain about 25 more yards to get at the edge of field goal range. And we've already seen them make one long field goal today, but it looks as though the Cardinals are gonna try to live to fight another day. Jalen back for the punt. Toby Smith back to receive. Fair catch called for and made at the 14 yard line. We'll see what Lindenwood wants to do with 139 left in the half. And so Lindenwood burned a couple of timeouts there on the second and third down runs by the Cardinals, so they don't have any timeouts themselves either. And so I think it's, you run something like a screen, maybe get try to get a 10 plus yard run out to the edge, a high percentage low risk throw to try to get that first, that first first down in the drive and then you can sort of get moving, but you can't be overly aggressive. You are backed up on your own 15 yard line here. Andrew Martin in the backfield with Cade Brister. They mark it right at the 15 yard line. First and 10 for Lindenwood. Has time, plenty of time. Rolling right, Brister. Everybody is covered, except he gets it to Martin, the last man on the progression and he runs out of bounds, but good enough for a first down to the 27. And that's, that's exactly, you know, how, how you can get the drive started. That did take a lot of time off the clock, but Martin very smartly able to scamper out of bounds. That's a 12-yard gain for as much time as it took. And now you can be a little bit more aggressive and open it up. Maybe try and take a shot to Smith or Rose. Rister wants to throw as a man across the middle. It is complete across the middle. Mitchell brings down Caldwell, I believe. First and 10 from the 40. Brister to throw again. Heavy rush to the sideline. He had to get rid of that. They were bringing everybody. Yeah, I like the call there by William Jewell to try to heat him up. They've done that a couple of times. You get the linebacker who came free. I think that was Ethan Fuentes who was able to get through the left side of that line. Quessy hooks in coverage. Has struggled at times today, but a nice job to hold up there. Brister, no time to throw there. Second and 10 from their own 40. Brister to Martin in the flat. Tries to spin around a man, he does. Breaks the tackle and gets out of bounds at the 47 yard line. Nice catch and then ensuing run by Andrew Martin. That's risky, risky by Martin to spin back towards the inside. And I think that's why Fuentes didn't expect it. This is a huge missed tackle because it, one, enables Martin to get a couple extra yards. But what's more than that is he's able to stop the clock to get out of bounds so you can reset your entire offense. Now third and three. He faked to Martin, wants to keep it. Here comes Cade, first down plus. Across the 50, across the 40. He's got lots of room. 10, five, touchdown Cade Brister. They knew he was going to throw. He knew that they knew he was going to throw. And he said, watch this. 53 yards. And that's one of the underrated parts of Cade Brister's game. He is a throw first quarterback, but that doesn't mean he's not a dual threat quarterback. And he climbs the pocket with great poise. And when he turns on the Jets, he leaves the safeties in the dust. It looked like they were stuck in molasses back there on the 20 yard line. What a job by number four to finish the half for Lindenwood. He just rolled past the DBs, didn't he? Snap back on the extra point. It is good. And Lindenwood comes roaring back on a tremendous play by their senior leader and quarterback, Cade Brister. Wow. 
an 85 yard drive and they still leave 53 seconds on the clock that is just boy that's just an impressive display of offense it really is you can't do it any better than that and they used a little bit of everything they used martin to uh, as, as an outlet one time across the middle when he was the last man on the progression then by design out on the flats really really nicely done methodical it's just been so interesting to see this team grow over the years as the they they clearly get more comfortable and they've gelled together as an offense as well and the confidence that they've built going to division one and this offense has just gotten better and better as the season has gone on they're making a statement here today 33 first half points wow So Lindenwood will look to pin Jewel deep here and go into the locker room with this kind of a cushion. And oh, about four minutes ago, I think there's probably a little consternation on the Lindenwood sideline, but I think they're probably feeling pretty good again. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think that the Cardinals offense has stoked a little fire on the Lindenwood sideline with how well they've played in this first half. A line drive kickoff. Did Lindenwood recover that? It went far enough. Let's see. An interesting call. And it appears William Jewell will get it. That was a crazy decision. So what I'm trying to wrap my mind around <laughs> here, and, and I apologize, Bob. I think that this was a squib kick. But I don't know if, did he intend to hit that off the return man? There's no way you can really plan that, right? And I think it really hurts the Lions now that the sure. Cardinals recover it because look at the field position. Although, it, he, he hit it so hard, it ricocheted so hard. It was, in, in a strange way, a really interesting idea. They go out to the flats for Jesse Thomas. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, but not too much more. Well, and that's what I mean. He, he hit him so hard <laughs> that you almost wonder if maybe that was a little gamesmanship or intentional to try to get a ricochet and steal a possession. Like they were playing dodgeball. Second and eight. Eggers to throw. Overthrows it down the sideline. Nobody could get open, and he just stops the clock with 40 seconds left. They make a couple of big plays here. They're going to try and bounce back with at least a field goal and, and we've already seen that they've demonstrated they can kick it quite a ways I think it was 49 yards again that that yep. field goal they had back in the first quarter so probably need about 18 yards to feel comfortable about at least attempting a try third and eight from the Lindenwood 47 Eggers takes a little dump off to the wing for Caleb Forrest and he goes out of bounds I think he's short of the first down though Nope, they're going to give him, no, they are going to put it right at the 40, so a short yard away from the first down mark. Wouldn't be surprised to see a run play and then a spike here. Fourth and one, he's going to throw, and it's complete for the first down to the sideline. Terrific play and catch by Caleb Forrest. Devin Edwards was able to bring him down, but not before they get the first down. Yeah, really nice job. I thought that maybe they'd go the safe route to make sure that they keep the drive going, but they're able to convert it through the air, which is even better. Nice throw by Eggers. Clock running. He wants a lot. He His arm was hit, and it's picked off. And then fumble and recovered. Here comes William Jewell on the recovery. Are you kidding me? Winston Quinn, after the pick, the fumble, the recovery, and a score. I don't think I've ever seen that. I... I I've, I've watched a lot of football. I've never seen anything like that. And then you're going to get a taunting call on top of it. Cardinals got a little carried away in the end zone, but how can you really blame them after a play like that? That was the worst thing that could happen for Lindenwood. They had too many people around the ball when it was trying to fall harmlessly to the turf. I believe it was Whitmore who was had the interception. And I think did, he, that, did he get collide, collided with a teammate? Yeah, we'll see a replay here. There were three Lions all vying for the interception going after the ball because Eggers was hit as he threw, and that was a total duck coming out of his right arm into the secondary. It was a touchdown. After the play was over, on sportsmanlike conduct, 
on the offense, number 15. 15 yard penalty forced on the kickoff. So unsportsmanlike on William Jewell. May will make this Here's a harder, harder PAT, but check this out. He's going to get pressure. hit as he throws and unable to follow through. You've got three Lions that collide. That's why Whitmore's not able to hang on to it. And then just in the perfect spot at the right Winston time Quinn. is Winston Quinn. And the kick is wide. No good. This is a crazy game of missed kick opportunities, missed scoring opportunities, fumbles and interceptions, and like that last play, all on the same play. But it's a two-score game now, 33 to 23. That was just an absolutely <laughs> one-in-a-million type play. The Lions probably should have had an interception to be able to kneel it into the half. Quinn just finds himself in the right place. The next thing he knows, the football's in his lap and he's got nobody in front of him because everybody was going for the interception. We'll get another look at it here. Hit on the follow through, which is why you see the ball floated in the air. And when all three of the Lions converge on the football, once Quinn catches it, there's really nobody there to make the play. I think uh, on the third look there, I think Quinn just snatched it out of the arms of Whitmore. I think he just reached in and took it and give him credit on the play. He never gave up on it despite the interception. That's a, that's a, that's a really good point. He wasn't really near the football when it was launched, but tried to get there, never gave up. <laughs> Got the six. And ended up with a touchdown. Craziness here in St. Charles, Missouri. They're really testing us today, aren't they, Bob? See if we're paying attention up here. 12 seconds left. Line drive kick. Caught. Fumbled. And somebody grieves down the football today. There's no question about it. Lindenwood will take over at their own 26. And I think that's sort of, this is sort of the game, honestly, I think William Jewell wanted to get themselves into. Sort of just a crazy, Make it a mess. muddy, messy game. And Well, again, we talked about if they can just keep in range, they don't have to worry about throwing every down because their running game can help them get where they need to be. Yes, and, and with that score now, only a 10-point ball game, you can stick in that offense in the second half. 100%. They don't need to feel any urgency about trailing. And that'll end the second quarter, the first half, in a back and forth, qua crazy quilt kind of a game. Lindenwood with a 10 point lead, 33 to 23. Really good half of offense by Lindenwood. And I'm inclined to say they played well on defense as well. You can't really fault the defense for the freak play there at the end of the half. Otherwise, you know, they have given they gave up the trick play touchdown, the broken play touchdown. But outside of that, they've played really a pretty good half. You saw Jed Stugart there not waiting to get into the locker room to tell his team what he thought. And knowing Jed, I'm sure it's positive and what needs to be done to be better. Now let's go down to Ethan Hannaford on the sideline. Joined by William Jewell head coach Mike McClinchy. Coach, a really solid first half from the team offensively, turning things around. Uh, had a separation there for a little bit, but fighting back. What can you say about the effort so far? Uh, really proud of the effort. I mean, we talked about uh, fighting every play this game for 60 minutes, and, and so far we've lived up to our end of the bargain. You know, big plays happen. Uh, we just need to keep rallying and keep playing hard. What's going to be the message going into the second half to fire your team up to try and pull out a win here? Well, we get the ball back, you know, so we want to score on the first uh, first drive and get this thing within one possession game, and, and then, you know, anything happens as long as we just keep playing hard. Coach, thanks for joining. Best of luck to you in the second half. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks, Coach. And that is the story of the game. They've got to feel very good about taking advantage of some opportunities, even though they have made some mistakes along the way. We'll take a break, come back with our halftime activities in a moment. It is the half. It's Ohio Valley Conference football. 33-23, Lindenwood leads William Jewell. And this is ESPN+. Plus. Time to take a look at our halftime stats and recap presented by Digital Scoreboards, a proud supporter of the OVC. Digital Scoreboards provides indoor and outdoor displays. Well, Zach Sook, as we take a look, score closer than a lot of people thought it would be and for a lot of crazy reasons. 
You see the way the yards are stacking up and rushing has been William Jewell. You know, that's what they're hanging their head on today, and you can see it right there. I think that crazy plays aside, one thing I've really been impressed with that I think the Cardinals have just done a great job of is, is they have played great offensive football in this game. They've got Jordan Clay up to 94 yards on the day, averaging eight and a half yards a carry. And Taylor Egger is a guy that they say on the roster has played in eight games, hasn't thrown a lot of passes this season, was six of 15 for 40% on the year coming into the game today. He's completed 14 of 20 today, which is a much higher than 40%. For 175 yards, he's also got a pair of touchdowns in this game as well. So I think that the William Jewell offense has done wonders offensively now what they need to do is try to figure out a way to try and slow down the, this this Lindenwood passing attack yeah and if they do that and and we see sometimes um good pressure but it's it's interesting that Brister typically is able to sniff it out and make the right decision when it comes yeah, they've got to find, I think, an answer for number 17. They did better as the half went on, but Peyton Rose just killed them. Three touchdowns, 161 yards, caught eight of his nine targets. They've done a nice job of sort of taking Kobe Smith out of the game. Yeah. I wonder if Lyndon would make some adjustments to try to get him more involved in the second half, and they're now going to have to account for Cade Brister's rushing ability because he gashed him for a 53-yard touchdown towards the end of the half as well. So I think if they can just continue creating some negative plays, you're not going to ever slow down, like completely stop the, the Lindenwood offense, I don't think, with the level of playmakers that they have and the, and the, and the, the consistency that they've shown this season. But uh, if they can just slow down and create some negative plays, they'll be in good shape. Back with more halftime activities in a moment. Lindenwood leads by 10. It's the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Back at Hunter Stadium on the campus of Lindenwood University, we've got a good one here, a 10-point game. And Zach Zook, uh, head coach Mike McGlinchey, uh, was very positive and talked about a key in the fact that William Jewell gets the ball to start the third quarter. Yeah, he mentioned that if they could just get some points on this first possession, make it a one-possession game, anything could happen. I think that's got to be the key for them on this first possession coming out of the half, whether it's three or seven, march the ball down the field, make it a one-possession game, and make the Lions sweat. And if they do, I think the Lions will. We'll take a quick break. More halftime, and then the third quarter comes your way next. This is the Lindenwood Lions and the William Jewell Cardinals to the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to Lindenwood University. Let's take it down on the sideline and we'll talk it over with Ethan Hannaford who sets us up for the second half. Guys, I had the chance to talk to Lions head coach Jed Stuger at the half. He talked about how he loved the fast start that they had in the first quarter. Obviously, the second quarter was a little bit messier. Some fluke plays in there that he mentioned. Sometimes you can't always control. The biggest thing that he talked about, though, was how they respond here in half number two. Have to have a strong start to half number two. Get a stop on defense. Get the ball back and score. Back to you guys in the booth. Good stuff. Thank you, Ethan and Zach. You know, we were talking about it during the break. And while, yes, William Jewell gets the opportunity with the ball, if your defense can start laying the wood and really begin to dominate as maybe they had expected to do, you can really turn things around if you can stymie Jewell on this drive. Yeah, and we talked about how important it was for the Cardinals offensively, and I think Ethan highlighted it. It's equally as important for the Lions defensively. One of the keys to the game for Lindenwood was to not allow a 100-yard rusher. Jordan Clay is right on the cusp of that. So they haven't done as, I think, well against the run as they expected to perform defensively here today, and they want to turn that around, and getting a stop on defense that first series out would go a long way to helping that. So, a big return, obviously, is something that William Jewell will be looking for. They have Whitmore and Latina back to receive. And the second half is underway. That will roll into the end zone. So, for a moment, it looked like Lantina might jump up and grab it. But... Discretion is the better part of valor. 
and he'll bring it out. <laughs> I like that. We've seen them struggle a couple different times, sort of in that in-between area, yeah. so probably better to err on the side of safety. And see how they want to play it. Again, the run game has been very good. Jordan Clay has ripped off some big runs. They go trips left with the receivers. Eggers, as Zach pointed out, is throwing much better than his previous stats would indicate. The give to Clay over the right side, close to the 30-yard line. We talked about this at the end of the first half as well. They can continue to run their offense. That's what that, that sort of fluke play at the end of the half gives them. The ability to not be down. The clock isn't the enemy. Yeah, right. So you're not down 17 points. You're only down a touchdown and a field goal. You can run your offense exactly as you had done the first 30 minutes. Clay had gained four, second and six. Eggers wants to keep it by design. Weaves his way through traffic. Gets the first down across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. And that's a play we've seen now four or five times. The Cardinals have had success with it, and they haven't shied away from going back to it. It's that quarterback power where they use the back to lead up in there. And the Lions just aren't doing a good enough job of firmly setting the edge whenever the Cardinals break that play out. First and 10 from their own 38. Taylor Eggers out to the flats. Quick catch and throw, Winston Quinn young man we've called his name several times already in fact of course he got that crazy touchdown before the end of the first half and a nice catch there but only a gain of one yeah well played by Jaden Patrick to attack the blocker Whitmire and then force Quinn out of bounds the best way to play those screens if your corner is with aggression attack the blocker defeat him and at least if you don't make the tackle force the the receiver to adjust Eggers wants to keep it again. He liked it the first time, turns the corner and has some room. Down the sideline, first down plus to the Lindenwood 40 and out of bounds. This is an RPO and again, they're able to get the edge with Eggers keeping it. Now it looks like they might try and go fast, but a missed tackle by Jaden Patrick on the edge this time after having a nice play against the screen. You're not gonna tackle six foot four up high, so they need to do a better job of tackling Eggers below the waist. From the 42, he just keeps calling his own number. Oh, nice tackle in the open field, but across the 40 to the Linwood 39 for Taylor Eggers. Hey, he learned his lesson fast, didn't he? Got the stiff arm trying to tackle the six foot four Eggers up high. Patrick has another opportunity to tackle him one play later, and this time just takes his feet right out. That's exactly how you do it. Second and seven from the 39 is William Jules feeling it. He's going to keep it, wants to throw for the end zone or near it. Boy, a lot of contact down the side, but apparently incidental. It looked like he was going for all the marbles, but Whitmore on the sideline as Bolden and Patrick were there. Yeah, this is just underthrown. Yeah. This needs to have a lot more juice on it. He never really gives his receiver, Whitmire, a chance to make the play. And now you're forced into third and long. Third and long seven. From the 39. Eggers, under heavy pressure, dumps it off to Clay in the backfield. He is thrown to the ground by Tyrone Griffin, the linebacker, who does a nice job. What a defensive stop by Lindenwood. Griffin, the sophomore, out of Indiana. Lions defense sure was not fooled. Look at the speed of Moses Ale to get into the backfield. Even on a play that they're not really trying to block him, it forces the timing of this play to be just a tick off. And Griffin, McLennan, they, boy, they had the whole front seven there to make the play if Griffin missed the tackle. Really nicely done by the Lions, and they're able to force a punt. Jalen, the punter, Kobe Smith back to receive. Low angled punt, he's gonna let it go. And what a bounce for William Jewell. They want it inside the one, it'll be close. That is the definition of a coffin corner kick. What a punt, it took a left turn right outside of the pylon, that ball had eyes. So, what are they talking about? 
what is Dusty Avorka talking to his guys? Hey, stay the course. What we do works, or we're going to try and do something different. No, I think they're going to still run their offense. It's it has to change a little bit. Inside your own five is not probably exactly where you imagine starting your first series of the second half. But if you can just get a first down, get out of the shadow of your own end zone, then you can run your offense. And to give to Andrew Martin, and that's the way you get out of the shadow of your own uprights. What a run by Drew Martin across the 15 out to the 17. Well blocked by the offensive line. And one thing I've really been impressed with all season long with Andrew Martin has been his vision. Look at this one cut. He's going to cut it back to the backside. And the linebackers over pursue, so there's nobody there when he makes that cut to the backside of the line. First and 10, and there's the breathing room that Cade Brister wants. Gives to Martin again. Drives up the middle for a gain of about three. Talked a lot about the Lions opponents that have played a little power football against them. How about the Lions doing a little bit of that? They're going to take big Gareth Warren, six foot five, 313 pounds, get him moving and get him going downhill in front of the back to try to create a little space. But credit William Jewell. They stood up pretty tall in that hole, only allowed the Lions to gain a few yards. Donovan Marshall in for Andrew Martin in the backfield. Second and seven from their own 20. Brister to throw. Steps up, looks downfield, but he's going to keep it, gets out of bounds, close, but I think just short of the first down. It'll depend where they mark it. Callahan ran him out. Nice job by Callahan to not just give Brister that first down, at least put a hit on him. They're moving the chains. Make him pay physically, but it is a first down, as Bob just alluded to. They might have to start putting a spy on Brister if he's going to continue to be able to create plays with his legs. I thought that was a uh, very fortuitous mark for Lindenwood. They're not very happy about it over on the William Jewell sideline. Now we're getting a conversation with the officials. I don't see a red challenge flag on the far side of the field. And now they are going to go back and alter the call on the field. Uh, it makes me feel good from up in the booth. Yeah, you I were, didn't think he made the first down. You were all over it, and not only did he not make the first down, he's I mean he's up a yard and a half yeah. short. Somebody in the zebra chain of command. Lost to some communication. So now it looks like they're going to have to officially review it. So we'll go under review, and they'll get it really close. But I think he's going to be about a yard short. I really do. Yeah, I think you're right about that. It's... We'll take a break. 33-23, Lindenwood on top. This is Ohio Valley Conference football on ESPN+. Zach, what is the Lindenwood third down call deep in your own territory, third and one? I'd like to maybe see the Lions try to run something between the tackles. They've got the back on the field to do it. Looks like it's Marshall back there. He's their tallest one. Out of Lutheran North High School in St. Louis. Man in motion. And it's a keeper. And Brister gets the first down plus. He's such a confident runner. He... he sees the field he has great vision which makes him a great quarterback he's got the legs hickman brought him down that's just a beautiful run yeah and that works too right Cade brister is actually probably technically the biggest runner of the football for the lions 222 222 pounds first and ten Cade back to throw tons of time rolls right dumps it off to the side not much of a gain there bethany gains a couple a little bit of a safety valve. Carson Anderson, the linebacker for William Jewell, brought him down. That's a great play by William Jewell to hold up on the back end. They were trying to get Peyton Rose free down the field, and it was well defended by the Cardinals, who have done a better job of taking away those downfield shots we saw the Lions hit on with, I mean, ease in the first quarter. They've done a nice job of adjusting. Second and eight. Their defensive backs are up tight. We send Landcreed in motion. Brister drops to throw. He wants to go long. Has a man. It's complete. Oh, what a great catch by Peyton Rose. I think 
Cade saw what you saw, and he sucked him in with the formation and then went long. Yeah, it looks like it was maybe a cover three look. They had a single high safety and Hooks giving up the inside leverage again to Peyton yep. Rose. That matchup, the Lions have exploited it all afternoon long. And the safety's a little out of position. He allowed Peyton Rose to get behind him and with the leverage disadvantage of Hooks, that's a pretty easy completion between Rose and Brister. Marshall in the backfield, the ball short of the 25, fumbled by Brister. He'll make something out of it. He's going to keep it, still has time. Now rolls right. He's going to keep it. See where he goes, across the 20, the 15, the 10, and out of bounds at the 8-yard line. I told you Brister was going to make something out of it. You just had the, he had the look of composure, despite the fumble. Make something out of nothing. That is why he has won so many accolades and holds so many records that this school look at his ability to extend the play and to get outside of the pocket and once he's broken contain good luck chasing him down that's just a fantastic play by number four they gave him a very kind mark again on that play they're going to put it at the eight or the seven excuse me it was really at the nine but they throw to the back of the end zone and it's caught touchdown i believe did caldwell come away with it yes they wrestled to the ground and caldwell had enough of a possession a little extracurricular there. We'll break that up as Lindenwood scores on a great catch from Jeff Caldwell. This time they pick on Quessy Hooks with the six foot four Jeff Caldwell. As you mentioned, a little bit of a dual possession in the end zone. Sort of like in baseball, tie goes to the runner, tie goes to the offense when both of them have their hands on the football. Nice job by Caldwell to get the feed in. And he has possession of the football. That's a touchdown. Lindenwood got their stop, gets the score. The extra is good. And Lindenwood, at the beginning of the third quarter, had things go just their way as they needed. Yeah, and we talked about what well, we heard from Ethan on the sideline. That's exactly how Jed Stewart wanted his guys to respond, and they answered in an emphatic way. 40-23, to 23, Lindenwood on top of the William Jewell Cardinals. It's the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Grant Latina and Marcus Whitmire back to receive the kickoff from the Lindenwood Lions and tantalizingly close did William Jewell come and now there's a big gap that they have to try and close up. And now they have to respond again. This offense has done a good job of sort of bailing out the defense that's been hit for 40 points already in this game. And they're going to have to answer the call once more. High and deep and out of the end zone. And we'll see how they want to play it. There's still a lot of time, and I thought they got away from the run just a little bit that last that last series. So we'll see if they go back to Jordan Clay. Maybe get a little more creative with him, but we'll see. Now, I agree with you. They had, a, I think, about a second and seven after a three-yard run where they tried to throw it. Ended up incomplete and then put themselves behind Then they schedule. had to throw, yeah. Yes. And the give to Clay. Big hole opens up. He jumps through it. Then the Lions close it down. Out to the 30, gain of five. They've done a fantastic job of running the football in this game with Clay and Eggers both. Team has done a really nice job. They're averaging over seven yards per carry as an offense. Eggers in the backfield by himself. He wants to keep pulling a Cade Brister across the 30 to the 33. He'll be short of the first down, called his own number again. He did that several times earlier and looked pretty good with the ball. He has impressive athleticism for somebody of his size and moves really well. Nice little quarterback design draw there. Breaks through a couple of arm tackles and falls forward. Would be surprised to see the Cardinals put it in the air here. This is Clay and Eggers territory, I would think, but there's no four, back in the backfield. Four receivers to the right side. Eggers used them as a decoy. Oh, found a hole, gets down the sideline, run out of bounds, 
at about the Lindenwood 47. Terrific play by Eggers, and it absolutely fooled the Lions. Yeah, I love the play design. It's sort of that modern spread philosophy. We're going to spread you out, not necessarily to throw it out there all the time, but we want less bodies in the box. And so you see here, there's not enough guys up front to try to make the tackle on Eggers. First and 10 for the Cardinals. Taylor Eggers gives it ahead to Clay. Across the 50 into Lindenwood territory. Looks like they're gonna mark it right at the 50. And that'll make it second and seven. This offense has been at its best when they're sort of getting into that RPO game, throwing the screens, handing it off inside to Clay, and then that quarterback power play with Eggers has been nice. See if they can stay on that track all the way down the field here. Eggers with Clay. He's looking to throw, throws deep to nobody. Nobody got there, they were not on the same page. And that's kind of what happened in that previous series. They had a second and sort of long and wanted to throw instead of run. Yeah, and not the first time we've seen a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. This time, Whitmire bends it back on a comeback and Eggers thought he was running the nine route. And again, this, this drop back passing game has not been efficient enough to, to run it in, in a situation like that. I would have kept it on the ground. Now they have to throw. And he does for the sideline and incomplete looking for Jesse Thomas. And again, the bad play on second and long set up the force third and long. Yeah, and, and I think that that's where this offense gets into trouble. Even if you only get, say, a two yard gain on second down, your whole playbook is still sort of at your disposal on third and four, third and five, that third and medium area. But when you get into third and seven plus, you're now forced to enter into your drop back passing game, which the Lions have shown plenty capable of shutting it down. At the 50 yard line, fourth and seven, and they punt it away. Spencer Red to track it down. It bounces out of bounds again to the 10, not a bad punt again. So it'll be a long drive for Lindenwood and that's what they'll try and do and in many respects try and put this one away if they can score another touchdown. This is a very important drive for the Cardinals defensively because you're right, if they give up seven here, boy, that mountain feels like it's about the size of Mount Everest to try and climb. And then with that gap, you probably don't have time to go to your strength running the ball. Exactly right. The clock then would start to become a factor. Still 20 minutes left in this game. That's a lot of points. With, with, with that many points, you're going to have to start throwing it. Brister gives it to Marshall, turns the corner. Oh, cut inside. Nice cutback across the 20 to the 22. That was a real nice cutback. Yeah, one of the better runs we've seen from Marshall this year, putting his ability on display. We've mentioned it a couple times in this game. He's just a different back. And I think you like some of that variability in your stable of horses back there to provide some different looks. Now they let him get the first down to give again to Marshall across the 25 to the 27 for the first down. This is absolutely the most extended run we've seen him get this year. He's the senior from Lutheran North High School in suburban St. Louis. Really not far from here, just across the Missouri River. Brister on first and 10. Yeah, let's see. Mason Brown, freshman quarterback, sending in plays. Out to the flat, Smith turns the corner and run out of bounds at about the 31, gain of four. Oh, they're gonna give him a good spot, gain of five. Pretty well defended by William Jewell there. Sort of a check with me when they get lined up and then they look back to the to the sideline. They're gonna see if the offensive coordinator, Dusty Avorka, wants to keep the play on or switch it. And that's dictated based on how they see the defense line up. Second and a long five. Brister faked a handoff and kept it, but they sniffed it out this time in a loss of about three on the play, maybe four. Really nice job by the Cardinals. Now they're gonna put themselves in good position 
to get off the field. Carson Anderson, boy, we've called his name a mm -hmm. lot here today, Bob. Terrific. Senior linebacker. Third and a long seven. So long, I'll call it third and eight. So they're going to check with the sideline. Too high safety look. Do we want to tag a route or maybe change the play call? And now you see the response. William Jewell switches it up. Brister wants to throw. Pocket breaks down. He slips out of there somehow. On the run, he's going to throw it. Down the sideline, tipped. Oh, the tip prevented it from being a catch for Kobe Smith. Otherwise, it would have been a big, big play. Boy, Brister, I don't know how he got out of the collapsing pocket. He just continues to find a way to extend the play to try to give his guys a chance. It's a standard cover two look from the William Jewell defense. But a nice job to try to give his wide receiver a chance and really well defended by Hickman. And then Sean Mitchell was streaking over. I think both of them may have got their fingertips on the football. Whitmire. Is back to receive the punt. High hanging punt, fair catch called for and made from the 30. Now, we were talking about Armageddon for William Jewell, but they got the stop they needed, and we'll see how they want to play it when we come back from the break. Lindenwood on top, 40 to 23. This is the OVC on ESPN Plus. William Jewell got the stop they needed. Let's see what Ethan Hannaford thinks about that. Ethan. Guys, last week, Lindenwood was able to grab their first win in the OBC, 33 to eight over State. A huge piece of that win was defensive back Darian Bolden's performance. Bolden had two pass breakups, four total tackles, and most notably, two interceptions. One of which was a 99-yard pick six that completely changed the momentum of the game. The interception was the third longest in school history, and the performance from Bolden was enough to earn him the OVC Defensive Player of the Week honor, as well as a FedEx Ground FCS Honorable Mention Player of the Award. I had the chat with Stugert this past week about Bolden's performance, to which Stugert said that which is short for Darian, was the player of the game. That is why he burned the wood at the end of the game. That kid deserved it. He has been a great steady player for us, and it couldn't have happened to a better kid. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Ethan. Good stuff. Lindenwood may need Darian Bolden to come up big again, Zach. He's been all over the field. Eggers to throw for the sideline, overthrown. Good coverage, too. I... I knew, I think he knew he did not have his man on the sideline as he was looking for Grant Latina over there. Pretty well covered. Yeah, Darian Bolden was in the area of that one. Had to run all the way across the field with the motion. So they create the opportunity and then Lindenwood comes back and stymies William Jewell. This, this half is being complete, played completely differently. <laughs> it really has been. I believe that's the first three and out we've seen from the Jewell offense here this afternoon. Spencer Red back to receive the punt. Makes the catch, muffed, loose, and I think William Jewell recovered. There's a flag. Too early, I think, on the contact. They didn't allow Spencer Red to fully field that punt, and so I think it's going to take away what would have otherwise been a big play. It was number 44, Ethan Fuentes, that I believe made contact with Red first, and that ball went off of his shoulder pad. It seemed like Spencer kind of was, uh, oh, we'll, we'll hear what they decide to do. Kick catch interference on the offense. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, Lindenwood catches a break there. I thought Spencer was kind of caught in between in his decision making. Looking, drifting, drifting, and he didn't really get behind the ball. So I was actually incorrect. I thought that Fuentes was early and that the contact was made by him. I, I don't know. I think that, that that's dangerously close to just being a muffed punt that's by right. Red. Let's see. Here it is again. I think that's a bad call. I think so too. And Fuentes didn't hit him beforehand. 
Handoff, though, to get things going for Lindenwood. Nice play as Jared Rhodes with a big run across the 45 to the 50. Jared Rhodes, the 5'11 freshman from Ladue High School in St. Louis. Sean Mitchell, the last man there to get him. We've seen Rhodes sparingly in this game, but when he's gotten a chance to make an imprint on the football game, he has some really tough running, and he has been able to put his foot in the ground, go north and south, and rip through some arm tackles in this one. First and 10, right at the 50. And We've he, seen this several times where they stop and have to double check what the call is going to be. Again, Rhodes, he stumbled. Might have cost him getting through that hole, but a short gain. Uh, Geisbers was able to pull him down. Yeah, timing was off there. I think actually Rhodes may have stepped on Brister's toe as they were trying to hand it off at the mesh point. But Let's see what that stumble was. Yeah, I think you're right. They... Their legs got crisscrossed. Yeah, which can happen on those read options because Brister's trying to either carry out his fake or even run the ball if he decides to keep it. Second and eight. Again, they go to Rhodes. Stacked up, though, just past the line of scrimmage. They may give him two. Geisbers again. They crashed pretty hard. I wouldn't be surprised to see if on the next series maybe Brister's going to keep that and run around the unblocked defender. Because there's nobody out there when Mitchell crashes down on that play. Third and seven, and they're going to let the clock run out on the third quarter. Lindenwood being stacked up. They'd like to get a little more cushion in this one, F leading William Jewell 40 to 23. We'll take a break and come back with the fourth quarter of play here at Lindenwood University where the Lions lead the Cardinals of William Jewell, 40 to 23. It's the OVC on ESPN3. Our upcoming schedules are presented by the Kentucky State Police who are hiring the next generation of troopers to serve the Commonwealth. New troopers will earn 61.5 and guaranteed raises throughout their career. And two more chances for the Cardinals to get a GLVC. Oh, boy. And a fumble. And recovered by William Jewell. That's going to make the rest of their schedule seem really good. <laughs> yeah, good. two more chances for Mike McGlinchey to get a GLVC victory. Sort of bad time in there. Big play by the Cardinals, and we'll get back to that here in a minute. The Lions' upcoming schedule, they got a couple teams in purple, the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles and the McKendree Bearcats. But check this out. Rose just forgets to put it away, and he gets hit from behind. That is a fumble. That ball comes flying out of there. It was number 55, Ed Becton, that was able to put the hit on him. Mitchell able to recover a huge play and a big turnover for the William Jewell Cardinals. And here come the Cardinals again, first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. They go with the quad receivers to the left side, which means Eggers will keep. And he fumbles. Lindenwood recovers. Darian Bolden. We asked if he was going to have to step up again, and he has. Weaving through traffic, still on his feet. Bolden brings it back inside the 25. Ethan Hannaford had talked about Darian Bolden, and we said they may need him again, and sure enough, there's Debo. Is this kid on some sort of hot streak or what? What Another fumble game. recovery for Darian Bolden and two turnovers on consecutive plays. Eggers forgot to put it away. And now the fumble recovery and Bolden becomes a returner. Look at him almost set it up back at the 50. And I thought wow. he was going to take it all the way here for a second after he broke the tackle on the spin move. What a beautiful job on the return by Darian Bolden and a huge play by the Lions defense to get the football right back. Debo, I think would have, he couldn't quite, didn't have quite the time to get back into third gear. Terrific play, little inside handoff, driving forward, Jared Rhodes back in there and running back. Tell you what, Darian Bolden is uh, making a bid to maybe repeat as the OVC Defensive Player of the Week. You wonder if maybe in at a conference game they'll pick somebody else, but he's certainly making his case, isn't he? No doubt about it. Kobe Smith goes wide right, second and ten. Peyton Rose wide left. Rhodes in the backfield. Play action for the end zone. Has a man overthrew him by 
inches looking for another Peyton Rose touchdown. Everything on the play worked, but overthrown, I mean, just off the fingertips. By just a hair, too, and we've seen Peyton Rose, if you put it in sort of his range, he will come down with it if he can get his hands on the football, and this is just a little too far. It's great protection, a beautiful pocket for Brister to throw from. He just missed this one by a step. Would have been Peyton Rose's fourth touchdown of the game. Third and ten. Brister under pressure, wants the end zone again. This time he's got Kobe, but again, just slightly overthrown as he tended to get it the, to the senior Kobe Smith. I think the, I think that he has the right idea here. He's trying to throw Kobe Smith open because you have the safety from the middle of the field coming over. Smith has a step on the corner, as you can see here, and yep. he makes the adjustment to the ball, but Cage seemed to put a little bit more air under that to allow Kobe the time to make the adjustment and run underneath that pass. Maybe he's overreacting with a little more air because of that first half interception where he didn't get air under it. Yes, very possibly. Now, an opportunity here for Logan Seibert Snap back, kick is up, it's high enough, it's long enough, and it is good. Big kick by Seibert to put Lindenwood up by 20, 43 to 23, with 13 plus, 13.48 left in the game. We'll take a quick break. The Lions by 20 over the Cardinals. This is the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Well, Zach, we've talked really throughout this game that just because of the circumstances, we felt like William Jewell could still use their running game to good effect. But now the clock is their enemy, clearly, and being down by 20. Yes, the, their drop-back passing game has clearly not been the strength of the offense, but they're going to need to rely on it to climb back into this game. They're going to need some explosives and some crazy things to happen like they were able to manufacture in the second quarter. They'll need more of that to get back into this game now down 20 points. So Jordan Clay, who's been terrific, maybe maybe some things for him out of the backfield. Not a huge, you know, not a huge uh, intended receiver at only 5'8". But they don't have big receivers anyway. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. how they want to play it here from their own 25 first and 10 up against it. I'm really interested now. I didn't see if this happened, but we haven't seen Amos really since the first half. And I don't know if he's injured or what the case may be, but if he's available, they need to get him more involved in the offense. They look to drive it forward and gain maybe a yard. My guess is he sustained some sort of injury that he was able to get off the field and we're not privy to the to the information and he's probably because he hasn't been on the field in yeah. quite a long time. Gain of one, second and nine. Sophomore Jordan Clay in the backfield with Taylor Eggers. Looks to throw, gets it out in the flats. They look to bring it back to the middle. Nice little play as they got it to AJ Austin. It'll set up third and three. I think you're getting to the point in the game, too, with the clock situation. You've probably only got three, maybe four possessions left in this game offensively if you're lucky and if you're getting immediate stops. So it's four down territory from here on out, regardless of the down and distance, I think. Tight end Hunter Thomas in motion. Looks to try and lead block for Clay. Did lay out one block. They'll get close to the first down, and I think he'll get it. Jordan Clay, a kind of a grinding sort of a run. But that's what they needed to keep the chains moving. Yeah, well described by you, because he did sort of grind. It was the second effort that I think gets him the first down. He stacked up before and sort of just lunges for it there at the last second and is able to get across the 35. 5'8", 177 pound sophomore. Again, Thomas, the tight end, sets up. The give again to Clay. Not much this time, maybe a yard. Lions have done an increasingly better job as this game has gone on of being more gap sound. Darian Mullins inside, able to make the play. Yep. 
They've done a really good job of defending that outside zone run that William Jewell has really run as its bread and butter to Jordan Clay. Clay only had 270 yards on the season coming into this game, and he's really racking them up this afternoon. Eggers to throw down the middle, has a man caught and then separated on an unbelievable hit. Wow, Magruder. He absolutely separated ball and receiver. That is a big time hit. Magruder had a similar play, not as big of a hit on a post that was caught in the first half. This time he's able to get an even better running start. Eggers does his receiver no favors, forcing him to expose his rib cage to go up and climb the ladder in an attempt to haul that one in. Man Magruder from St. Louis, Rittner High School. That's the way they play football at Rittner. Good clean hit. Again to throw to the sideline. Complete this time to Jesse Thomas. We'll see where they mark it. I think it'll be a first down. No? They do. I think he dropped the ball. Oh, no, incomplete. Mm -mm -mm. Bolden broke it up. It'll be interesting to see on the replay if this is just a clean drop or if Bolden got his hand in there. Not the best look there, but Bolden was certainly was all over all him, over him yeah. regardless. So looking to punt it away again. Kobe Smith back. Punt, wobbly end over end. Kobe with the catch at the 25, got some space to the 30 to 35, the 40, breaks it outside to the 50, down the sideline, spins around a man, across the 35 to the 31. Beautiful return by Kobe Smith. Lions have multiple guys. Spencer Red, Kobe Smith, a lot of threats in the return game, and that was beautifully done by Smith. Watch this run. Able to get some space and we talked about it in the first half get to the highway there he is outside has blockers i think he spins around the punter here who look at that half-heartedly attempted to bring down number one there great return now lindenwood knocking at the door one more time from the 32 give inside to andrew martin that was well read he gains maybe a yard Actually, they'll say just back to the line of scrimmage, I believe. And in motion was Landcrete. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty, second down. Haven't been that many penalties today it's been a fairly clean game on the penalties now turnovers is a whole nother story yes yeah that's correct outside of a couple false starts the odd pass interference here and there it's been a really clean football game as far as again as far as the penalties are concerned I have to clarify that Duggar dropping back across the middle oh beautiful throw and catch nicely done to Spencer Red Cole Duggar, the sophomore, getting some clock here in the fourth quarter. And that was a pretty play. And, and he started the game against William Jewell last season. Brister missed with an injury, and Duggar had a fantastic day. So this is a defense that he's familiar with and actually had some success against last season. 6-1 sophomore from Owasso, Oklahoma. Man in motion. Hand off straight ahead, no gain. Actually a loss of a couple. Andrew Martin stacked up there. Interesting, the two offenses are kind of completely different in that Lindenwood has really had the success in the air. And, you know, it's been tough going on the ground. And vice versa for the Cardinals. That's a tough timeout to burn. Yes. Already let the play clock bleed down off the run stop and now wanting to think about it, you would have liked to maybe call that timeout immediately after the third down play was over. We'll figure out what they want to run when we come back. 43-23, Lindenwood on top. It's the OBC on ESPN+. 
Fourth and three for Lindenwood. From the 25, Cole Duggar, the sophomore quarterback with Andrew Martin. Landcrete moves right to left. Duggar wants to throw. He wants to throw to the end zone. He's got a man. Fumbled, caught! Caldwell, after the juggle, the tip, and the catch. Jeff Caldwell, touchdown, Lindenwood. What a play by Jeff Caldwell to never give up on it. It's pretty good coverage by Ethan Reynolds, the sophomore from Kansas, but Caldwell is able to catch it off the ricochet, bring it in and still get, I believe, both of his feet down. Uh, we'll get hopefully a good look at it here. That's really pretty good coverage. And then he's able to come down with it. Wow. Really good coverage. But Caldwell, six foot four, using his size and his height to his advantage. Second time we've seen him pull one away from a jewel defender. Second touchdown in the game for him. Jeff is the freshman from Louisville. And at 6'4", he is going to be dangerous for the next few years for Lindenwood. Seibert for the point after. And Lindenwood hangs half a hun. 9-17 remaining. Yeah, the old the old 50 burger <laughs> on William Jewell here today. And how about the throw from Cole Duggar as well? I mean, a great catch, but Cole Duggar giving his guy a shot, and you could be potentially looking at the next Lions passing combination. A little, maybe a possible glimpse into the future there. 50-23 Lindenwood. It's the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back. Lindenwood University and the homestanding Lions have a convincing lead with 9-17 remaining and we'll kick it off to William Jewell. There's that look again. Wow, what a terrific catch by Jeff Caldwell. The toe tap as well. Just great contact balance and concentration. They drive it deep. Catch made at the two. Lindenwood on the coverage. Can they cut it back up the middle? Missed a tackle, but a nice one at the 25-yard line. And that, they're going to, not a good mark for William Jewell. Be inside the 25. And that's where they'll take over first and 10. We were just talking about it amongst ourselves in the in the commercial break, but this William Jewell team has done a lot of really good things today. They've just been an, an inch or a step away. They've just come up a little bit short today on multiple occasions, but they've played, I think, a lot better than the, sh the score shows right now. I think so too. Fake to Collier Surly, the keep for Eggers. Throws on the run, and it's dropped. Intended. Kavon Johnson, okay. yep. number 81, I think was coming across. I believe that's right. Boy, that's unfortunate because Eggers sort of did his own Cade Brister right there. Anything you can do, I can do better. Eggers did a really nice job to get out in space, and he puts this on the money. That's just a pass. It's got to be caught. Second and ten. Not much happening there. Swarm tackling by the Lindenwood Lions. Collier Surly trying to push the pile there, isn't he? But not a whole lot of room. And the Lions definitely have gotten much better over the course of this game at defending that outside zone. They struggled. Clay had some big cutback runs early in the first half. But the Lions have been a lot more assignment sound and have really shut that play down in the second half. Third and eight. From the 28. Man in motion. Eggers forced to throw. Forced out of the pocket. Rolls right across the middle and broken up. Intended for Whitmire. A little bit behind him and then he didn't have a chance. And this, is, this is dangerous. I mean, you got an underclassman at quarterback in Eggers. That, he honestly probably shouldn't have even tried that because he gets outside the pocket. This is a designed screen. Nobody's running scramble drill to try to get open. They're blocking for Whitmire, who's the intended receiver. Once that play is off schedule, you need to throw it into the dirt or about the fifth row of the stands. 
you can't take that chance there. They, they get away with it. It just ends up becoming an incomplete pass, but they didn't have anybody on the scramble drill there because it was a screen. Took quite a hit, too. The punt is away. Good one. Nice hang time. All the way back to the 22. Spencer Red goes right to left and then up the field. Slips a tackle to the 50. Still on his feet and out of bounds at the 45. Spencer Red with a terrific return. Feels like the Lions are almost wearing them down on special teams. You feel like the Cardinals are maybe running out of gas because Red is just outrunning them to the sideline. He runs practically the full 53 yard width of the football field and just beats him to the corner. Really nice return by Spencer Redden. Great vision to see where the open space was. That's not really easy from his perspective to determine that. Lindenwood takes over first and 10 at the Jewel 42. Duggar again on a handoff to Martin. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, excuse me, that was uh, Donovan Marshall. Marshall on the carry, actually lost a yard. Callahan on the tackle. Credit this William Jewell defensive front. They've done a really nice job today of not being pushed around by this Lions offensive line that's been fantastic this year. And we have a timeout. I think Looks it was like Sean. Sean Mitchell has yeah. to come off. Yeah, you're right. 7.46 left in the game, 50-23, Lindenwood. This is the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Second and 11 for Lindenwood. Just inside the 44-yard line of Jewel. Cole Duggar to throw. He wants a man. He's got a man. Caldwell the catch. Stays on his feet and into the end zone. Touchdown. Jeff Caldwell does it again. Is this kid electrifying or what? They pick on Quessy Hooks again. And then the safety Jackson Vest couldn't make the play either. And he, Jeff Caldwell snatches it for both of them. Hooks is, I guess, a little bit behind the play, but this is another contested catch. And how about the ability, the concentration, and the balance of Caldwell to not only haul, the, haul in the catch, but keep his balance to run into the end zone after the fact. What a play. Stays on his feet. And the kick is up and good. And the Lions rolling with seven and a half minutes remaining. Dominance now. Yep, and I, and I really think you might be getting a glimpse into the future of Lindenwood football here with Cole Duggar to Jeff Caldwell. That might be the next Brister to Peyton Rose or so Jed Stugart and the rest of the Lions faithful hope. And it's a little unfortunate for the Cardinals that this game has gotten a little bit out of hand because I think they've actually played a pretty good football game today. It won't be indicative when people see the score of how well they played at times. Yeah, and, y and you can tell they're, they're getting a little down on themselves here. It, hopefully they can finish strong. But they, they were in this game pretty deep into it, and they did a lot of really positive things today. They certainly don't look like a team that has one win and is winless in the GLVC. Coming in here on the road against the Division I FCS Lions, who have gotten off to a great start and are actually receiving votes to be ranked in the FCS poll. William Jewell sends Whitmire and freshman Lane Cavanaugh back to receive the kick. Seibert drives it deep, looking for the freshman. The catch made at the four-yard line and up the middle, a stumble, and then brought down across the 20 to the 22-yard line, Cavanaugh. Took that line drive kickoff and returned it to give his team a chance with 7.28 remaining. So I think if you're William Jewell, the last seven minutes plus, go back to sort of running your offense. See if you can put a couple of positive drives together. Maybe put another touchdown drive together. Get something positive going 
before you head into your final two games. They'll have surely a very tough test coming up against UND next week and then finishing up against Quincy. Two more chances to get a GLVC victory. That'll be the focus of head coach Mike McGlinchey moving forward. Hand off to Clay. Turns the corner around the right side. Out to the 30-yard line. Nice gain by Jordan Clay. And now Lindenwood playing some of the kids up on the offensive line. Yeah, we're getting a chance to look at some fresh faces along the front four in this team that is very upperclassman heavy. A lot of these kids are going to be starters next fall, so it's valuable experience for them as well. They go to Clay again. Oh, another nice run. And gets the first down. Well done. Darian Mullins on the tackle. Mullins is one of those youngsters. He's a junior Billiken from St. Louis University High School, 6'2 sophomore. First and 10 from their own 34 with 640 left and the clock ticking. Clay getting plenty of reps. Stacked up across the 40, keeps driving forward to the 42. That's a nice run by Jordan Clay. It really is, and you're seeing sort of now with new defensive linemen that haven't been used to having that outside zone run run at them all day. Now, William Jules able to get some more space there, and the Lions aren't gapping it out quite as well as they were with the previous drives with their starters. Second and two. This time, Eggers is going to keep, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Terrific tackle on the play. Nicely done by Caldwell. Yeah, that's not an easy, easy play to bring down 6'4", 220-plus in space like that when you're being stiff-armed. That's a beautiful play by Frank Caldwell to bring him down in the open field. Great tackle by him. Third and three, and finally, Clay's going to get a breather. Looks like tight end Hunter Thomas is going to line up in the backfield. No, he moves up. They go quad left. Third and three. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, so far in this game, that's uh, indica indicated a keeper for Eggers, but we'll see what they call coming out of this timeout. They were not set personnel-wise. Jordan Clay didn't know where he was going to line up, and he was actually covered up on the line of scrimmage. So... Had he run a route, he would be, it would be an illegal formation. So they have to talk about it and make sure they get lined up correctly to avoid the penalty. And that's kind of a costly down and distance to, to get hit with a procedure penalty because it completely changes what you're going to run. Don't forget, if time allows, we certainly will try and talk to Jed Stugert. Talk to him about maybe the ups and downs of this game. Ethan always breaks it down with Jed at the end. So we'll see how that goes as they're – Lindenwood now set up to win their sixth game of the year and go six and two as they're in their first trek in a Division I football. Third and three. Eggers wants to keep it. It's broken, had no chance from the beginning. He's thrown for a two yard loss. I think that was Frank Caldwell again. The, kid, the kids are all right. Yeah, the, the, the kids are all right. And we've seen Frank get some run, but look at him. He spills this, gets inside of the puller, totally defeats that block at the point of attack, and then takes down the running back, too, as a little bonus. That's just a beautiful play, teaching tape type stuff from Frank Caldwell. Geeland to punt it away. He goes for the sideline. Spencer Red is going to let it drop. He does. And a nice little roll, but not a huge one. It'll set up Lindenwood just outside their own 25-yard line. 427 left. So we'll get to see probably in all likelihood another drive from Cole Duggar. It's been very interesting to see him come in and run the offense. I mean, they haven't missed a beat since Brister left the game. Duggar, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, does have experience, and he's had a lot of success in his young collegiate career. Duggar, little inside handoff, breaking a tackle. Here comes Jared Rhodes down the sideline. Is anybody going to catch him? The 30, the 25, and finally brought down 
diving to take him down. Hooks was able to catch his heel and bring him down on a terrific run from interior to exterior. This is, I think, the best game we've seen Rhodes play this season. I mean, he's just looked electric every time he's touched the football, and he's broken so many tackles. The missed tackles at the point of attack, allowing him to get into the second level and turning on the Jets nearly outruns a cornerback. Terrific work. And timeout called by William Jewell, stopping the clock with 3.51. 57-23 and got a timeout. They want to take it. Probably a teaching moment for the Cardinals. Situational football. You know, you're you right still on got a, you still get, It's an opportunity to practice. Absolutely. It. You're right outside the red zone. Hey, let's try to get a stop here. Force them into a field goal kicking situation. This is very valuable experience. A Division One opponent on William Jewell's schedule. A chance to face some competition that you would hope then when they get into the to the to the game next week against the GLVC, then maybe you're feeling like the game's slowing down for you a little bit. Almost to use a baseball analogy, like sort of swinging a, a bat with a donut on it, then you feel like you got all, <laughs> the, all that bat yeah. speed then. Sort of similar, I'd have to imagine, when you go back down to then your regular division of play. Little play action there, and we got a flag. They were trying to get that one on a quick hitter on the left side. And they got Jacob Swihart for illegal hands to the face, so that'll really back him up. That's a personal foul. Wow. He's crashing down on the left side of that line, and the umpire's all over it. Ball was batted at the line of scrimmage anyways, but that really puts him in a bind. Cole Duggar steps up as the, pro as the pocket breaks down. That pass was broken up. He was trying to get that one to McManus. Callahan was there on the breakup. Thought maybe we were gonna see Duggar pull it down and run for a second there, but at the last second, he saw his receiver streaking over the middle and thought he could thread it in there. Good reaction by Callahan because the receiver was certainly open there over the middle of the field. Second and 25. Rhodes is the back. Duggar steps up, it collapses, finds Rhodes, a little safety valve, powers his way past the defender across the 30 to the 28-yard line. Goodness gracious, what a hit by Rhodes. Really nice job by Ethan Reynolds to hang on, but he took the worst of that hit. Duggar's gonna do a nice job under pressure, finding his outlet, and then look at Rhodes. Boy, you don't wanna be on the receiving end of that too many times. Cole Duggar, third and really long, and has time. And now it breaks down, stumbles, keeps his feet, sets up, throws, wants the end zone, has a man, touchdown! Another touchdown! Aiden Jones on the catch. So some guys that don't get very much clock getting in and making things happen. Yeah, I believe that's the first touchdown, collegiate touchdown catch of his career, and what a play by Cole Duggar. Wow. He extends and finds some extra time that I don't think anybody thought he was going to have, and Jones comes open in the back of the end zone. Beautiful throw, too, on the run, a long ways. Snap back, kick down up, and good Aiden Jones, Mascuda High School out of Belleville, Illinois. And Aiden comes in, the six-foot sophomore. He kept playing as well. Yes, and yes, he did. kept working to get open. Yeah, really nice job to not give up on the play. Typically, scramble rules are either come back to help out your quarterback, go vertical, or sort of head towards the sideline. 
he sort of drifted to the middle of the field because when you're in the end zone already, you're sort of limited in where you can go, but he made the right decision, finding some open paint, and Duggar found him for six. That's just a really good play all around, and I've been very impressed with Cole Duggar's performance off the bench here very today. Very nicely done, yep. I mean, I mean, he really hasn't missed a beat at all, and he's done a great job running the offense. So 248 remaining, 64 to 23. Some of the crowd starting to drift out. Big Halloween event on the Lindenwood campus today. The whole town gets involved. Dark Carnival, I'm told. Kick off through the end zone. Yeah, we were talking about that in the production meeting. It's really become quite an event out here. It used to be a just on campus thing here at Lindenwood, but now uh, really tight-knit community of St. Charles, Missouri, and they're involved, and the uh, town folks get into it, and it's a big deal, and everybody has a great time, and they'll have a great time, especially after, when this one's over. And the party's going to be on. Beautiful day for it here in St. Charles as well. We've been blessed with some great weather for these games this fall. Eggers is only a sophomore. You say, why are you keeping your starter in? He can use all the experience. William Jewell doesn't want to accept these losing seasons. Give inside for Clay. Jordan Clay with another nice gain. Yeoman's work for a 5'877 pounder. <laughs> yeah, he's, been, he's done a really nice job today. He's been a bright spot for them offensively for sure. Over 100 yards, basically by halftime. Second and five. Lindenwood will move to six and two. William Jewell to one and eight. Hand off to Clay. Oh, threw a beautiful hole. Just got tripped up. He was ready to go to the house. That hole opened up. It was a perfect blocking scheme. He gets out. Across the 45. Wow. Yeah, if Gus Hetzel, the safety, doesn't get the shoestring tackle, I think Clay's going all the way to Pater. I guess he had to beat Sammy Muniz as well. But he had an angle on him, I thought. He, he, he did. Did not get a great spot, but they'll drive forward again and pick up about four on the play. Ball carrier was Chris Collier Surly. He's a freshman. So those two, Clay and Sur uh, Collier Surly, will be junior and sophomore next year, and they can do some damage in the GLBC. Second and six. Collier Surly. Oh, it took a big hit, kept moving, kept the feet going. He gains four and gets it out to the Jewel 48-yard line. Yeah, they're, they're still hitting down there. Georgie with a big hit. We've seen some big collisions here in the later stages of this game. That time, dealing out the damage was, was Chase Georgie. Third and three. 38 seconds left to throw, Eggers, downfield, broken up, or no, that's going to be a catch. Lindenwood had a shot at it, but it was a terrific catch. Another one of those, we've seen three or four of those today where it was up for grabs. Yeah, really well done by Kavon Johnson. This should have been an interception. Jaden Littlejohn was in perfect coverage, just couldn't make the play on the ball. Throwing to the end zone again, 12 seconds left. They'll take a shot to get one more score on the board, Will William Jewell. Little John, I mean, he had perfect coverage. That was just a great play by Johnson to take it away from him. We'll get another look here. He goes up and high points to the football, but Johnson's just going to use his size advantage. He stands six foot two. Little John, 
only five foot eight, gives up half a foot to him. Looking to throw, wants the end zone. This time it's picked off. Interception for Lyndon Wood. Well, and that'll do it. And that time, it was Little John. Little, Little John was able to make the adjustment, and this time he doesn't get out battled for the ball by Johnson. It's that same one on one matchup. Eggers goes back to it again, almost an instant replay of what we just saw. And this time, Little John's able to go up strong and come down with it. Fool me once, shame on me. You're not going to fool me twice. Yes, yeah, that's, a, that's exactly right. And he's going to secure the victory for Lindenwood. They can just kneel on it now. Little John, uh, another St. Louis product. And uh, while Lindenwood and Judge Stugart recruits nationally, they know they can mine a lot of talent in this metropolitan area. Little John Parkway Central High School in St. Louis. And that's, I think, a big key for them moving up to the Division I level. I think they feel like they can keep a lot of this local talent at home to play here in St. Charles. And a lot of their key contributors, as you mentioned, are from the area, Little John among them. So Lindenwood goes to six and two. William Jewell falls to one and eight. And in a game that really, in my view anyway, wasn't decided till several minutes into the third quarter. And then, then it, the table tilted too much. There was just no way that William Jewell could go against the grain. Yeah, a couple of turnovers early hurt William Jewell. And then the Lindenwood Lions' ability to create big, explosive gains in their passing game. Just star-studded plays by their receivers all over the field. Jeff Caldwell with, I believe, three touchdowns. Peyton Rose had three touchdowns. And it was just an impressive passing display from both Kate Brister and Cole Duggar later on in this one. Here today, 60 plus points for the Lions. An opportunity for young guys for Lindenwood on both sides of the football to get some reps yes. that they hadn't been able to get earlier. And that's always great for your team morale too, because I think it's easy sometimes when you're a second or third stringer to get a little down on yourself. You're not helping the team win. You're not really a part of the week to week, but to be able to get some game experience and a big win at home in front of your home fans and your family, that always helps your morale down the stretch to stay in it, stay involved and stay focused. There you see Jed Stugart with his team as they brand in another victory. That's cut from, I believe that's one of the big oaks that went down here on the Linwood campus. Uh, I'm not really a tree guy, <laughs> so don't hold me to that. I believe I heard it was was an oak. Anyway, that was from one of the down trees here, Linwood campus. Shirts on a birch. <laughs> Poplar. Yeah. This is a new tradition that they've sort of started here at Lindenwood under Jed Stugart the last several seasons. Elm. And yeah, they, I mean, hey, they're gonna have to find a different tree if they keep winning football games because they're running out of space down there. So they'll take care of that little bit of ceremony. By the way, this Lindenwood campus is old and beautiful. And while the new campus has a lot of new trees, as you watch the game from our camera angles, you saw a lot of the old trees over on the old campus. And uh, uh, so it's really two campuses fit together, the old and the new, and it's really beautiful. If you've never had a visit to Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri, there you see Coach Stugart talking to his guys. And I bet he's saying, we weren't happy with things early, but you guys stepped up in the second half. That's my guess. We'll see when we'll find Ethan, out in a we'll, moment, we'll right? see when Ethan lassos him in after after his speech. But yeah, this campus to further illustrate your point is certainly it's beautiful all year round, but this time of year in particular with the with the changing color of the leaves on the trees and this brick campus just looks great this time of year with the leaves on the ground and it's a pleasure to be here. And as you saw in our crowd today, uh, it's not just the university students, but the community of St. Charles, Missouri has really embraced Lindenwood overall, but in particular in their uh, uh, ascension to Division I football. No question about it. I mean, there's been a different energy here this season than ha there has been in years past. And that's not to say that 
the Lions weren't popular before this season because they've always drawn good crowds and the community's always been behind them, but it has felt a little bit different this year and it's been special to be a part of and cool to witness each each game day. So the Lions, with a couple of games left, do have their work cut out for them and they'll go on the road next week to Tennessee Tech um, and that will be interesting as they go there for another Division I game before returning home for their final game of the year, Senior Day. We'll be here, of course. Uh, that's against McKendree University. Yeah, another GLVC rival to wrap it up, but I think they've got their eyes set on that Tennessee Tech game. It can get them to an even 500 technically in the OVC record, but they would give them their third win over an OVC team this season with their losses only coming to Two UT ranked Martin. teams and Southeast Missouri State, who are both ranked, as you mentioned, and will finish as the top two teams in the conference. You also got to throw in a really nice victory uh, over Central Arkansas on the road in there as well. So this team could run the gambit and finish with victories over Tennessee Tech and finishing up with a victory if they could against the McKendry Bearcats, they would count this season as a great smashing success. Well, that Central Arkansas game, um, uh, I don't think voters, because you mentioned receiving votes in the poll, uh, I don't think they slept on that. I think they realized what, what an impressive win that was in Conway, Arkansas. And that's why if you can win on the road and against an OVC opponent, you've really made a statement. Now let's go down to Ethan Hannaford with Coach, Stu Coach Stugart. Guys, I'm here with Lindenwood head coach Jed Stugart after a big win against William Joel, Jewell, Coach Thoughts on the win? I know we talked at the half about uh, it was had some moments there in the first half, but team responded. Thoughts on the response? I thought we played a great one first and third and fourth quarter. I think second quarter we just, you know, it's an example of we got up and we got a little bit lost some focus. And, you know, we had a couple of fluke things happen that, you, you know, you can't, you know, the ball bounces different ways. But I thought, you know, I didn't think we handled a little bit of some of the adversity in the second quarter. But what I'm proud of is at halftime, you know, we went into halftime and said, hey, let's, Let's get back to playing like we can play and get focused up and, and play a good technique football defense. You know, made adjustments and started tackling and fitting up where they're supposed to, and that's what how they can play. And then, of course, offensively, just a lot more consistent. So I was proud of kind of uh, how they responded at half and kind of came out and did the things that we asked them to do and what they wanted to do. So proud of them. I know it seems like I'm on a broken record about Peyton Rose, but 200 more yards receiving today. What can you say about his performance on the field? Yeah, every week I don't, you know, I, I don't even know how to answer that anymore. The, the kid just makes plays uh, beyond. Uh, uh, you know, he's just a special kid, and you know, he's a competitor, and he deserves. He's so humble, and you know, and uh, you know, he doesn't realize just all the stuff he does because he's just a football player. I'm so proud of him. But every week it's just a new deal for Peyton, and uh, he's fun to watch. I'm not, you know, it's fun when the ball goes up, you just have a pretty good chance he's coming down with it. You had quite a few guys that don't normally, nor, aren't normally on the field getting too much playing time. They were able to get in there today, one of them being Cole Duggar, who obviously he had the injury last year against William Joel. How special was it for him to be able to come back, respond, and have a, a solid game filling in for Brister there at the end? Yeah, we were going to play Cole. You know, we want, you know, he can come in and he could play immediately. This isn't cleanup time. This is, but I felt like, you know, last year he didn't get to finish against William Jewell. We wanted him to come out anyway and, and get those two quarters, you know, at least to get his last quarter that he didn't get. And, uh, you know, uh, Cole, we give, I have all the, all the confidence in him. It's fun to see some of our young bucks. We had some true freshmen in there playing uh, and, and making some plays. That's kind of our future. And that was kind of fun to see too. And we got a lot of guys uh, on the field today to practice or to play. So I'm um, excited for them. Coach, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Congrats on the win and best of luck next week. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, fellas. Congratulations, Coach Stugart. Thank you, Ethan. It was uh, a terrific win. And uh, uh, Coach Stugart, like you said, it was only the second quarter that kind of frustrated him a little bit. Yeah, they responded well coming out of the halftime. Clearly there were some words exchanged and some game plan adjustments, but the, the players responded well and they were able to really put their stamp on this game in the second half and run away with things. So you look ahead and you want to clean up some things. It'll be interesting, a, a quick thought about Tennessee Tech. Again, going on the road. You've done it once. You've got to, I think, um, 
sort of reach back and remember what you did to win in Conway, Arkansas to go now to Tennessee Tech. Yeah, and, and I think a key difference with facing Tennessee Tech now as opposed to some of those early OBC games is this team has a belief that they can do it. They know that they can go on the road, and they know that they can win in the OBC. They have a victory, victory over Murray State and Eastern Illinois, and they're looking for their third next week against Tennessee Tech, the Golden Eagles. So uh, this will be a, certainly a challenge for Lindenwood, but I think that they have belief that they can come out with a victory. That's going to wrap things up from St. Charles, Missouri, where the Lindenwood Lions beat the Cardinals of William Jewell 64-23. to For Ethan Hannaford, down on the sideline. For my partner, Zach Zook, I'm Bob Ramsey, saying so long from Lindenwood University. The final score again, 64-23. to All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of of ESPN.